know the German terror. Oh no, you are chewing on my blouse. Why would you do that? Why would you do that little bug? Okay, let's see. As people, as people get on, I want everybody to see you. I want everybody to see, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, you are the craziest little bug ever. So hopefully, oh my goodness, wait a minute. Was I, hmm, I'm here waiting for the little bug ticker banner. I wonder if I could do this as we're talking here. Um, let's see. Hold on, you guys. I'm sorry. Let's see. What am I writing here? Check out my Don't worry. We're going to be talking about interviews on real i'm just trying to inform everybody dot com oh my glasses are falling oh here's a little terror here's just a little tear ad Let's see if i did that right okay where is the chat room there we go we want to chat it up with people oh no i'm gonna sneeze oof I got the little dog. <laughs> hey, everybody. Let's see. Do you love Dr. Dre and Snoop? Oh, Curtis, yes. Oh, thank you for the hearts. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, Chet. Everybody's so sweet. Prince Royalty, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That makes me feel good. Thank you. Everybody's so kind and so sweet. And especially on this Sunday, because it's Sunday. Thank you for the positivity. And let's just keep that positivity going. And I know that's kind of a pipe dream sometimes. But, well, yeah, I just want everybody to be happy. And as we can see online, that's not always the case. And, and it happens. And I'm... Ooh, I'm good with it. Oh, little bug. He's trying to jump. Oh, okay, good. Uh-oh, Charlie Bear's gonna uh, watch that unfold. But like I was saying before, you know, can always try to keep things positive and try to share the love and try to be, you know, uplift people. I, what I, and I admit, like, I, that's what I wrote in the blog. So if everybody doesn't know, um, I did this interview, go to realmelina.com under the blog section, shooting on Trish, you will see the interview. There's a link to the interview, um, as well as another link to, so it's Malcolm's um, interview, which I love Malcolm. He is amazing. If you guys go on to his uh, channel on YouTube, he's just the kind, like, he's just amazing. He's a great soul as well as DS. So in the blog, I posted both of their, their links. So then you guys could see both of the interviews. So then you could see everything. And I mean, this is the thing about one being in the public eye and, and also like, you know, just, I have to talk to people. And the funny thing is, I used to be such an extreme introvert. Communication was not my forte. So thank goodness, knock on wood, that I'm, you know, I mean, I'm able to talk to people and socialize and, and talk to you guys the way I do now. But back in, you know, like 10 years ago, I was very shut down and I, it was really hard for me to interact with people. And I was just horrible at talking. Everything that came out of my mouth, you know, it was just, it was so wrong. Not that it was like bad. It's just that you know, it's just people take things the wrong way for the fact that everything that comes out of my, like my end, my view, my perception is everything's always happy, go lucky. It's, it's positive. And whenever I catch things where I talk to people and when they tell me stuff, and I think you guys have caught me on live before where somebody said something really innocent and I took it wrong because of my own insecurities and my own traumas. And so I realized that when I talk to people and they respond with negativity and hatred and they think the worst of people, I feel, I really do feel bad about them. It's, it's this, this real hard thing where it's like, okay, try to protect myself, defend myself. But then at the same time, it's like, Melina, you got to understand people have gone through their own trauma and 
And it's not to say it's like this harsh, crazy ass drama where, you know, that it's life all like not life altering. What am I trying to say? Where it's something really super traumatic, like a car crash, death and all this stuff. Some people have, but some people's traumas is not um, something dramatic and big like that. Sometimes they just go through this. They experience something where people, their friends, their family, their loved ones, people that they trusted like with their heart has done them wrong and manipulated them and made them like gaslighted them and all this stuff. Like, you know, people we hold dear can treat us really badly and abuse our trust and change the way we see things. So when I have people tell me like when I'm being nice, that the niceness is fake and all this stuff, I just... I feel bad for them. Like, I'm usually sarcastic. I'm trying my best not to be as sarcastic as I usually am because in my family, and I know the Irish, I, when I go to Ireland, that's why I love Ireland so much. The Irish are very sarcastic and their their humor is, you know, kind of, it's, it's not to get under your skin, but it is, you know, and it's all out of love and jest. So I get that humor and that's the way my family is, is like, so, it's hard for me not to, to <laughs> I'm trying to hold back because I know a lot of people don't understand that kind of humor, especially here, like in the United States, I guess, because people expect me to be sensitive to those things. I am sensitive person, but I'm sensitive when it comes to trust and, you know, friendships that get abused and heartache and all this stuff. And I care about people. I put myself in their shoes and I try to think things through. But I'm not perfect and I can't be on my game 24-7 of being insightful and thoughtful <laughs> as much as I try. So on that day of the interview, and I wrote that in the blog, on the day of the interview, now I was there, it was hot. If you guys were there at MCW, I love MCW. I'm so glad I was there. But during the day, it was hot. So I'm talking to people and it's long day didn't get anything to eat and granted excuses whatever but i know that that people can relate and understand but it is what it is and my brain was tired so i didn't think get everything through and i'm not saying that i that i don't believe in what i said yes i i believe in what i said but the way the words came out it wasn't the best way to say it. So it's going to be twisted in every which way. And I could have said it better. I just, my brain wasn't even thinking. I was so tired. It was hot. <laughs> I was hungry. And I was also thinking about my father. So, and the anniversary of his death. So thanks to you guys um, on his birthday, he, I actually, I didn't say anything, but I was talking to you guys here on live stream um, on the day of his birthday. And I had a good cry, and I know you guys didn't know, but I had a good cry before I came on here. And it's like this heart, the heart, it's hard. Sometimes I don't understand, like I don't know what to say. Sometimes I don't have the best things to say. When people pass or go through something difficult, I don't always have the best things to say. That's why I always give a hug, because I don't know, I'm not a perfect person. I've talked to a lot of people and they are so good with their words and they're so good at comfort comforting and they're so good at explaining things where I'm still working on that. I'm still working on that. I know how to say how I feel and, <laughs> and it's genuine. My feelings come from a genuine place. Like you'll know if I hate you. And for the most part I don't I don't hate people because what's why? why i feel like it takes more energy to hate than it does the love and hate feels worse when i'm like angry at somebody or <laughs> come here, come here. like when i'm angry at somebody it takes a lot of energy and it doesn't feel good but when i love somebody when i love you guys it it's less energy where it's it's less draining like it's, it's not draining at all it feels beautiful like that's what was meant to be felt these dogs uh, this is my <laughs> come on little bug <laughs> i can't you know throughout the week so i need to take a picture of them right now i need to take a picture of them right now because i know i've been showing you guys pictures pretty much every week 
of how much they've grown. And they've grown a lot, but even though they're still small, they are so energetic. Like, honestly, I think it's because they have each other and they're playing with each other. So they're kind of like feeding off of each other's energy. But each and every puppy, Charlie Bear, Blue, Reina, none of them were this hyper. <laughs> none of them. Oh my goodness. Oof. Okay, maybe. Okay, let me go. Oh my gosh. Let me try something and then I'll come back. Oh, somebody said, okay, love is great, but harder to get real love when compared. But see, this is the thing. I like that you said this because watch. Let me put this on. Okay, this is what you said, Rex. And it's true. The thing is, is that like that's a, another reason why I don't really jump into relationships anymore. And I was that hopeless romantic that wanted to find true love and my soulmate and all this stuff. And, and people when they want to date. And the thing is, my perception of love. And it's not to say anybody else's perception is bad. Love is love, and when you feel that in your heart. It's the most beautiful thing. So no matter what inspires it, triggers it, and brings it out, it's a beautiful thing. Even if it's just, you know, a physical, whimsical, spontaneous, uh, just, you know, just a an attraction. And still, that is a wonderful feeling. But when it comes to love, like my perception of love, and I got taught that through bad relationships and, a, and two really great ones, uh, one more so recently. And the beauty of that, what I learned, is that love isn't necessarily what somebody gives me. And as much as I really appreciate somebody giving me unconditional love, it's that feeling that comes out of me, my love for, for someone else, the unconditional love where I'm asking for love and nothing in return. It's because I genuinely love somebody for everything that they are, the crazy, the good, the bad, or, some people just are very it's very calm and they are shy there are they are quiet they are very um some people are very work focused and you meet all these different personality types and you love them exactly the way they are and you never ask them to change and there's i understand that there's um compromises but sometimes when like sometimes in life when you have your friends you ask more of your significant other than you ask of your friends. Like you ask more compromises of somebody that's supposed to be your soulmate than you do of your own friend. You're more forgiving. And when I realized that, I was like, I love all my friends so much. I'm so blessed with incredible friends. I don't ever want to ask that of somebody. I don't ever want to change anybody. I don't, I want them to be who they are and be happy who they are and not have to think they have to change for me. I just be you. And that's it. And sometimes people don't, they're not themselves because they want to impress you. And they're not themselves because they feel like they have to be a certain image. And I just really value just, I don't know, I love people exactly who they are. So you guys, being who you are here with, that I see online, wonderful, fun, supportive. Honestly, like you're genuine for the fact that Honestly, like you don't ask for anything in return. And when I do it, when people do ask for follows, I kind of, I get weird. And it's not, honestly, it's not you, it's me. And it's the truth, that line, it's true. I don't want to follow people because one, it'll flood up my, my timeline. I already get anxiety as it is going online. And I need to look at these, these questions, but I do get anxiety because on my, timeline i want to see everybody and I want to see quotes and i read things and i can't because there's so many i follow so many people <laughs> i don't know how you guys do it for those who are great at navigating it you, bless you you guys have skills because i am awful at it and as you know i'm really awful at social media so like being on here like i'm i'm a work in progress so I'm doing my best, but I don't follow because I'm trying not to overwhelm myself and I'm trying to be able to follow my friends and whatnot. And so I wish I, like, I try my best by liking you guys' stuff and, and responding to you guys. So you may not get the follow, 
but I am doing my best to reply to you and at least like if I cannot um, reply to you to just, just say I, I you honestly like you have no idea and it breaks my heart that people question when how I feel because I have no reason like honestly everybody hates me so it's all good like really there's no <laughs> coming back from that so I there I just am what I am if you hate me you hate me if you love me bless you <laughs> but honestly like i i tell you the truth because i feel like when it comes to lies there's too much it's too much it's too overwhelming for me so that's why part of me is like when the things that get brought up there's so much stuff behind the scenes of things in life that you guys don't know and i just stay quiet because i just want to protect everybody and take care of everybody so when it comes to because people keep asking like okay who, who are the they who is this who's that and i don't say names because i will never be that person i don't need to bury somebody and say a person's name and ruin their life because you know what my life got ruined a lot so when it comes to like if people make mistakes because i don't know i don't know what they went through and until i find out and usually when i do find out i embrace them because they had their own struggles and we realize that we're all going through struggles together but because we only see what we see with our own eyes that we don't realize what we put somebody else through or you know what they're going through as the you know as you're going through what you're going through so all these things it's like i don't ever want to put throw anybody under the bus because you know what that's what happened to me and i will not do that to somebody else all you need to know is that certain events happened and that's probably will uh, eventually come out but whatever i tell you guys i tell you little by little because it's also like kind of like a trauma you know sometimes people aren't ready to say everything and for me i'll say I'll, it'll be therapeutic because i can't hold on i'm a good secret keeper but at the same time when it comes to all these things that people are, are saying it's like wow but you don't know what happened. But you don't know what happened. And you don't know, you know, you don't know. And I wanna protect everybody. I wanna take care of everybody. I don't wanna ruin anybody's life the way that like people ruin mine. I don't want people to be, have a mistake held over the head for the rest of their lives the way like <laughs> it's happened to me, except sadly enough, I make a lot of mistakes. So, <laughs> but it is what it is. And I hope that through all, all the mistakes I made, cause some of them, I like, I admit I, I've made the mistakes. I won't lie about that. And others, it's like, man, people just fabricated that. But I will admit to whatever I need to admit to. And I will say it all. I'll be honest. I don't, I don't like carrying lies. It's just too much to deal with, too much to juggle when I just want to be honest. So much simpler than to think like, oh my gosh, I have to juggle all these thoughts and go around all this wording and verbiage because I have to. I have to think about all the people involved the way people never thought about me and i don't care i don't care what anybody says in in this sense so don't t twist that around i don't care if people when people tell me oh i shouldn't say that when it comes to when people will tell me like just say it like who cares da -da -da -da. and like i it's like yes and no oh my god you're so precious um yes that be I don't know. it's part of who I am I say other people will say it and do it and do not care about the repercussions but you know I make mistakes and even just like talking on an interview you know I didn't think things through as I said it because my brain's like fried I've worded something wrong and granted thank goodness it's just me like I, I mean Trisha's gonna be fine no matter what. Honestly, you guys. So people who are like getting all angry, whatnot. I mean, even if I did attack her, even if it was like from the heart or anything, which it's not. And that's the thing. It's like, why do you want me to hate her so much? Like, I think it's like something that you guys want. Not you, not my peoples. You know, you guys are amazing. You guys are so sweet. I want to hug you. But the people I was talking to on on Twitter earlier, and granted, I know it's Twitter, <laughs> but I. I just think like, why do you guys want me to hate? Why do you want this beef between us? Is it because I was the ultimate heel? And then if we faced off, it'd be the ultimate thing. Because I think, yeah, fuck yeah, we'd have a great match. Like, hold, 
we always did. So I like, I would think that's yes. But I just kind of think like, wow, I was really villainized. And again, I have to think about what I say and I didn't do it at the on the interview. And that's why it's important for me to not say names and not, I want to protect people because I don't care if people, there's a backlash on me. I've went through it. I survived it, went through it again, survived it. It's all, I, apparently, I think it's going to happen all the time. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I think I learned how to navigate it and thank goodness. And I, I think in, in actuality, all this being crazy, you know, when people go fly off the handle over like little, little things, uh, it actually keeps my name alive. I mean, I was trending so again for like the 20th time this year. <laughs> so I don't know. Like, I don't even know what to say. This is just such a crazy world where I'm like, okay, I don't want people to see me as a bad person. I do, don't mind the mistakes because I think people should see that we're all human and we all make mistakes and life isn't perfect and relationships fail or things happen in life. Like, it's normal. Baby boo boo. Oh, did you guys see him? <laughs> I don't know if I showed him or not. So this is little Asher. But I'll, I'll try to finish what I was saying. I know I go all over the place. I love you guys. Oh, Brandon saying I'm your guardian angel. You're such a sweetheart. Um, yeah. So, you guys, I'm just, thank you for being you. Thank you for understanding. For those who don't, I'm so sorry, like, that, that you, you experience stuff in your life that people don't treat you well that they didn't treat you well that you think that kindness because that's why i got told on twitter that it's fake and me saying nice things about trish and i've also been told that about saying nice things about people <laughs> I was like, i'm like oh my goodness why is it that a lot of people their their first reaction is kindness is like like you're you know perfect example maybe have you ever gone somewhere and someone said bless you but they said, bless you, like in an F you. That's what I feel like. Okay, so it's the tone, you know, it's the tone. So I get it. So when you hear that, it's like, oh my God, you just said bless you to me. <laughs> but this is the way I feel like. I feel like people think when I'm nice and I compliment people and I say nice things that people think I'm saying like, bless you. <laughs> I'm not. And I, I just think it's sad that we've reached the level in, in society that we have a lot of people who can't, they won't, they don't believe in kindness. They don't believe, they don't trust it. And even an act of kindness. So if we reach the point where saying nice things about somebody genuinely, because that's where I'm at. If you understood, and I know, I know some people that I've talked to today, they understand where I'm coming from and why I, you know, all the crazy in my life and all the reality, they know they're not censored to anything. Um, they're like, wow, you're, you're pretty remarkable because there's a lot of people wouldn't go through what I've gone through and keep my chin up and be positive and love everybody and, and all that stuff. But I do because I believe in it. I genuinely believe in it. I don't... Um, I don't believe kindness is a weakness. So don't don't care about the damn tears, okay? Kindness is not a weakness. It's a strength. It's something beautiful that I feel like people are losing the art of it. And it's a shame because it changes people's lives. It changes people's worlds. I was just talking to a lady yesterday. This is the funny thing. I did an interview about kindness and how we we could pay it forward and all this stuff. So I was doing that on the interview yesterday of explaining how that's why I am the way I am. I believe wholeheartedly with all my heart because you know why? These people who came into my life and they were strangers and showed me incredible acts of kindness when they didn't need to, they're the ones that are in my heart. And I don't even know if they're watching or if they, like I know one of the girls who responded yesterday, she, she I haven't heard from her in two years. I met her about four years ago um, maybe five, maybe five years ago, um, got stuck in Ireland. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't book a hotel. 
uh, she she heard what I was going through, and she also heard I was a wrestler. And she said, "You know what? Because she felt better having me around. She says, you know what? Come like come with me. Like let, we'll get the hotel. And we were all stranded. Like all of us, our flight got." Uh, um, canceled and we had to find accommodations and it was just this whole massive thing while we're all trying to go to different countries and she was such a sweetheart and ironically I told her isn't that insane I was just talking about you today and you messaged me what a random crazy coincidence that two years like out of two years of, of speaking to each other that on this day when I just told somebody about you you messaged me that's insane and thank goodness because she again she was just her act of kindness of being who she was these people will stay with me forever whether i meet them for just a minute uh, an hour or if i know them my whole entire life acts of kindness people who are good to you it stays with you and it carries you through traumatic times because what did I think of? Yeah, I thought of the whole, like the terrible things that that depressed me and made me want to die. Of course, like I was in that. I was soaking in that in the whole jacuzzi of it. But you know who, like the people who were in the back of my head that kept me alive? It was those people who were kind. Because I had to be here for them and I wanted to see their faces. I wanted to talk to them and heard them in the back of my mind telling me all those things beautiful things that they've always said. So acts of kindness and people who are kind, when it's real, please listen to them, please. Especially, um, you, you could pass, sometimes it's like you don't wanna listen to it. It's like, yeah, whatever. But in times where you feel like you can't make it and things are difficult, remember their kind words. Remember what the strength that they had and all this stuff, because I mean, I'm speaking from experience. They carried me through some tough times, you know? So yeah, <laughs> I, I don't want you guys to not believe in good people out there. I know it's cut tough because there's so many people who are angry, so many people causing drama, so many people just, it's like we have enough to deal with when it comes to all the illnesses in the world and tragedies and, you know, mother nature and all this stuff. We've got enough on our plate without all this other stuff, but it is what it is. But I want you guys to have hope. I want you to go on my timeline and smile, not think the worst of me. I want to help you through the tough times, even though it's only with the a picture of a dog <laughs> to make you smile. <laughs> like, I, I just think I try no matter how small and I don't even know what big is at this moment other than like I give hugs to people honestly I try my best and that's all I can do and I'm not a perfect person if I had all the answers believe me I would do them all I would like to I would be perfect if I had all the answers and knew the perfect way to do things so just to let you know where this girl's coming from because I <laughs> I seem to always force gump my way into like crazy and into putting my foot in my mouth or uh, just having people hate me. It's just the, I mean, now I could laugh at it, but <laughs> back in the day, it was just like, I, I was in tears, like not these tears. I was in other tears where it was just like, I, there's nothing I could do for anybody to ever see who I am or to be a human being is weird. But that's, I guess that's life. I mean, let me know, you guys, if there's any one of you who've experienced that, whether it's in high school or um, your work or anything like that. Because I wonder, like, is this just in re like my like wrestling? So I think it was one of the interviews that I was doing yesterday. I think he was, he told me, I think he told me, I think you were an isolated incident. And I told him, you know, I don't mind that because i rather it happen to me because, look, I got through it. I, I don't know how somebody else is going to go through it, everything that I went through. And I don't know, like, I don't want there to be another Ashley. I don't want there to be another, any of these things. So if the incident had to happen to me, if this isolated, like, circumstance of how people hate me has to happen to me, I'd rather have it happen to me. 
because I don't want anybody to have to suffer and hurt and feel pain and worry and struggle. And that's the reason why I keep saying like, you know, I want to give everybody their dues and everybody credit. I wasn't trying to take anything from anybody. I just, I want people to feel loved. The people that are lacking that love. Not that they are lacking love in life. People find their way. But you hear the stories of how wrestling never gave back to some of these people. And that's where the drug abuse happens and the suicides happen and, you know, going down a dark path. That's why I said what I said. And, and it's because I wanted the people that I love. And I said it wrong. I admit it. I said it wrong. I don't even know how many times I could tell you guys. And I know a lot of you guys are saying, stop it, Melina. <laughs> but I, I honestly feel like I, I just want people to see my heart so badly because back in the day, nobody saw me at all. So I guess it's this insecurity of, wow, like people still don't see me after all this time. Like, what can I do? Like, I could be sacrificing myself and nobody would care, which I wouldn't. And I know that's dramatic, but it's that feeling of, wow, people just are out to hate no matter what. You can't change their mind. You can't make them feel better. You can't be nice to them and have them change their minds. Like, why? I just, I don't want people to be hateful. Like, God, I really do want to hug everybody. It's like Malcolm. So if you watch that that episode, Malcolm, I love you. Um, you are so funny. You're, I said, no, I want to hug everybody. And he goes, no, you touch grass. <laughs> I was like, no, but I want to hug you guys. And he goes, oh, touch grass. And that is my reaction. I want to hug you guys because when words fail me, the hug comes out because it's like, I hope you feel what I'm trying to say. I do care. I hope you feel how much I care. I hope you feel how much I love you. I hope I, yeah, you feel how much I appreciate you. And I don't know why I, I, I have to do it in a hug. Or if you're hurting, I want, I wish I could absorb that pain through a hug so you don't have to feel it anymore. That's the person I am. I don't even know what else to do and say. I'm here crying on a live stream. <laughs> what more do you guys want? Like, not you guys. I know you guys are sweet. But I mean, the people who just are determined to see that I just, I'm a, like, I, I am the rumors. And hopefully, you know, I'll get to talk about that at some point at a better time through written word. But uh, it's just a crazy, crazy world. I guess I think back and again, my father's, my father's passing. I... Yeah, I think about life. I think about what we're going to do to make things better for others and what he wanted for me and all these things. Because he did a lot. He was such a strong man. He was, he's another Superman, that guy. And it makes me think about what I do in the world and, and what I'm doing for other people and you guys out there. So I don't have the right way of putting it all together yet, but at least I hope you guys see that I try. Aww. Genuine question. Have you ever did? <laughs> Why do I read these things before I read them? I read them out loud before I read them. It's like, if I've ever been with a 20 year old young guy, <laughs> well, back in the day when I was 20, you know, that was a million years ago. I can't work out who is cuter between Melina and the dogs. Oh, I've got Charlie Bear for it in first. Oh my goodness, yes. Charlie Bear is the cutest. I love that you guys are so sweet. Um. Oh, what was I going to school for in the Lucha Ground situation? I was going to school for psychology, because this is the thing that it, I'm I'm telling you. It's this obsession <laughs> to try to figure out why why did people why are people so angry and hateful like all the things that happened to me in wrestling is the reason why i wanted to go into psychology and i wanted to help people and i wanted to better understand my peers when you know to put myself in their shoes or understand what they're talking about and why they do what they do and for me to be able to be 
better in, in talking to all of you and hanging out with everybody and being more uh, to give back to the world, I have to understand everybody or that's what I tell myself in my head. And I, I do, I love talking to each and every one of you. That's why when I go to countries, I go to the airport, I'm talking to people in line. A lot of people are like, Melina, you just really just <laughs> go up and start talking to anybody. And I don't know, I don't, I'm not, I think once I, I used to be afraid of talk, going up to talk to somebody, it was a fear of mine. I used to hide behind my mom's legs. And as I got older, I just like would be off to the side and just wait and be quiet. And I never spoke. And it was a fear to talk. And I, I don't understand. I really don't understand or know why. But I remember that fear very distinctly. And just shutting down, but I'd always listen, but I wouldn't say anything and I wouldn't even know what to say. So being able to talk now and being you know, conversational, that's a huge leap. I may mess up. I may say the wrong things and piss people off, but um, I've come a long ways compared to what I was. So I'm very proud of myself, <laughs> the good and bad, I'm proud of it. Um, but I like talking to people. I like talking to strangers. I like to understand everybody. I try my best to. I hope that by the time you know I pass on, that I become a really sweet. Like I, I was telling people on Twitter today, I always wanted to be. I don't want to be like sexy lady, old lady. You know, I want to be my grandmother. She was so kind, and you just want to hug her and pinch her cheeks. And she was just such a wonderful woman. So like she was a saint, that woman. I always wanted to be like her, like have long hair like her mother, because my great grandmother had long white hair is gorgeous. And maybe I won't have long white hair. Maybe I'll have short white hair. We shall see. But I always wanted that. And my grandmother had these big round cheeks and it was so cute. And she just, oh, I just want to hug her. Oh my goodness. She always wanted to cook food. And I just, that, she was so loving that I just thought she was the most beautiful person to become. So I never wanted to be like that sexy, um, like I have to keep in shape for the rest of my life. I loved her and I wanted to be her. So we all have odd, <laughs> yeah, not odd, but different goals. But by the time I'm her, when I'm old and gray and, or white hair, I want to be able to see, to have seen and talk to as many people as I can to be able to help others in their times and needs and finally find the right words to say, or at least something that that is useful to others. Hopefully in a couple of years or 20, who knows, that I could do that. <laughs> I'm a work in progress, you guys. Oh, look at all the sweet stuff you guys are saying. All my dogs are adorable. Thank you. I like that finally they're sleeping. Oh. They have been so active since like six o'clock in the morning. So I try to like, I'm like, I'm gonna sleep in a little bit. Nope, they won't let me. They won't let me. Alex Paris. Hey, you go, hey girl. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> um Young Macho. I can't see I can't see the rest of it. It says, Thank you for compliments. You saw me in Texas last year. I had some dangerous curves. You know what? See, okay, I like all these nice things that people say when, when you know, now that I'm like full figured. <laughs> it's like, because, you know, I love all my fluff, honestly. And it's a hard thing to get people to accept, especially in wrestling. Because in wrestling, you know, they want you to be shredded. They want you to look like a supermodel or Barbie or, you know, the way I was. Not that I was anything perfect back in the day. But I look back at myself back then and I realize I was lean. I don't even know why I was, I had such a, um, like a body dysmorphia. I did. And I really thought in my mind, I thought I was fat back then and it didn't help that everybody said I was fat. So I was just like, it, you know, it's in the back of your head. And now I really don't care. Like I, I don't mind. Like. I like, <laughs> I just like being me. So I just get happy. What I realized is, especially in regular world, outside of wrestling world, when I go out and talk to people, everybody responds to the kindness. Everybody responds to the, the humanity and the, and the soul and the heart and the person. So I love 
you know, being myself and not having to worry about, because I used to be, I used to be very, um, what is it? I had like eating disorder. So yeah, I worked hard, but at the same time, I really was awful when it came to eating. So yeah, I had re like really bad issues. So for me, the relationship with food and being able to be okay and not punish myself if I get gain um, some weight or to be able to accept myself and not hate myself if I eat or hate myself if I you know don't look perfect all of it I am so proud of the person that I am because it was hard it's hard to be around like all these shredded people and I have to be the same thing and to find you know acceptance within myself good job me <laughs> uh, i want other people to know like you know be happy i want everybody to be happy but i know in wrestling you have to have a certain look because you're an athlete but i'm not in wrestling anymore so i'm not wrestling so i'm cool with it <laughs> oh my goodness hey peter hayes oh you're such a sweetheart peter hayes shout out to peter hayes um, who is this? J Rad 410. Your selling was brilliant. Thought you really got knocked out in the triple threat with Beth, Mickey, and, and that is such a coincidence. Did that like get posted or something? Because I was just talking to my brother about that yesterday, and he was telling me, he's like, Melina, when you did that triple threat match, he's like, you really didn't, he, like, basically, I was in the match to get like beat up. And he's like, wow, you really sold your ass off for everybody. And I, and I, I don't remember the match. I really I have to watch it. I just remember like we did this thing where I think Mickey was in the corner. I was giving her head scissors, but she gave Beth a head scissors or something where it was like this trifecta thing in the corner. I remember that. I remember the, I definitely remember the, the, um, the fireman's carry for the fact they're not the coat rack. Why am I calling it the coat rack? I am C and still I have not mastered being able to speak, but um, I remember that you guys know what I'm talking about. So as long as you know what I'm talking about, uh, because I was on the bottom. So being in the bottom and I'm the one like taking all the weight. And then I'm also the one being like, you know, bending in half. I was like, you guys, why am I always the one to get picked for this? <laughs> I volunteered. <laughs> I volunteered. I was like, I'll do it. <laughs> you do it to me. You can do it to me. <laughs> but I remember that. I just don't remember details. I also remember there was something in the middle of the ring that we did. But I can't, I don't remember. I was always focused on the next thing. But yeah, he was telling me, he's like, yeah, you really didn't do any moves. He's like, really, they just tossed you around. And, and I said, well. Yeah, you know, it's part of the job. <laughs> but the point was, is that it's a weird coincidence that my brother brought it up and then seeing you and you brought it up. Oh, Chet the Bringer. You're so sweet. <laughs> oh, Tony Lee Ho's like, hi, I love you. Thank you for the compliments. Angel Rios, sending love to Puerto Rico. Have you ever wanted to wrestle in Lucha Underground in 2015 for season two? Because I remember I saw you manage Johnny. You know, I wanted to manage him. I didn't want to wrestle. Cause this is a thing, like I wanted to, I want, you have no idea. Like, so when I got out of wrestling, how funny, my hair was short back then too. <laughs> when I got out of wrestling, I didn't want to be a part of it because it's it, the, the, the environment was just something I'd never experienced before. And I needed to center myself and get therapy and whatnot to to understand what me, my life, what I want, how to be stronger, how, how to figure out what the hell happened <laughs> and to go into another locker room. And it's not necessarily to say that every locker room is bad. And this is the thing. My perception back in those days is I didn't know I've never been in any other locker room. I was in the indies, but when you're in the indies, sometimes you're the only girl and sometimes there's another girl, but it's just the two of you. So WWE was my first experience of going into any place where there was a lot of girls. And I went in there all happy because I was like, I want sisters. I don't want to be a weirdo anymore that I'm the only girl that likes wrestling where I'm from. <laughs> 
and it just didn't end up being as as great as I like happy go lucky as I wanted or thought it'd be. Um, that's my naivete, you know. <laughs> I really believe that I had like I was. I don't know. Some people were would told me like you're like a Disney character. You think everything's like all happy and good. I really did back then. Honestly, I really did think that back in those days. I don't know. My my brain was just always like cheery. <laughs> I saw little birds and flowers everywhere. And honestly, that's the way I kind of saw things through my eyes. It's you know, so it's cute but sad because I just want to hug that girl. When I look at pictures of back in the day, I want to hug her and say, oh, you have no idea what's out there in the world, girl. <laughs> but I wish I could prepare you, but I couldn't. <laughs> but it is what it is. And when it came to the the Lucha Underground thing, you know, I wanted to, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to really, I just wanted to manage. I didn't want to wrestle because it just didn't. I just wanted to get better emotionally. And that's why, like, I think when I was going to school at the time, I really thought that was really helping me. Like going to classes for psychology really helped me, not only in when I was talking to other people <laughs> outside of wrestling, <laughs> but it helped me f uh, figure out myself more in depth, more in detail, and realize other things about myself and what I'm able to do. So. It was a blessing. I just wish I would have finished schooling. Oh, he's saying you don't see any fluff on me. Mm. I love you for that. Oh my goodness. How are you? Oh, I love that you're like, you guys are greeting each other on the chat room. You guys are wonderful. Okay, why are we talking about birthday spankings? Look at the way people's minds go. But this is, you know, is this in every chat room or is it like just a wrestling chat room? You're going to hear me ask that a lot because I actually want to know. I don't want to go in any of the chat rooms, so I don't know. And I just think, is this in everything or just wrestling? Oh, that Thea Trinidad. I am blessed. So Roger, um, Royer, Royal Crosby, I am blessed to have Thea in my life so thank you for saying that that to have me as a sister and but I, I really do believe that I am so happy to have her too so I miss her you just made me miss her oh good hearing you oh I like that you guys are talking to I love the glasses thank you Ray thank you Ray that's so sweet oh my goodness Oh, Zaid, you asked if John and I are still friends. Like, no, you know, you could be part ways. But the last time I saw him, it was always good. Like, that's the that's the beautiful thing. It's you wish each other well because everybody comes into your life. So um, I need to redo my 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 tattoo. But if you see right there, like right here is my red string of fate. So it's supposed to be tied to your to your soulmate. But the reason I got it is because what I believe is every person that enters your life is meant to be in your life for a reason. And I remember that every time, even like when things go wrong, I'm like, every person is meant to be in my life for a reason. So I always find the reasons. I always think of the reasons. And when it comes to like, say, relationships too, people have taught me a lot and the experiences that you have and the whys of it all. And you're, and you're not always going to get like, why did things happen? But you get these experiences of strength, of what you want or what you don't want. Um, the beauty of how friendships and what like what that means to you and things that you've um, experienced and had to learn together and all this stuff. And, it, and for me, the way I see it is I don't see my ex relationships like in this sexual way. I see it in this learning way and this very beautiful friendship because that's what I take out of it. The love. It's the love and the friendship and the learning lessons. And when it comes to John, we went through our, our crazy time and I know his heart and he knows mine. And I would hope that, you know, that his, the kindness has never changed. And I believe that it's, that, that it's there and it's always been there. 
And there's a lot of forgiving that's been done. And that's a beautiful thing. And I think when you grow and you, you let things go and you forgive and, you know, you, you grow separately, it's a beautiful thing. So we may not be friends, but he's a person I always wish well. I always wish him and his, his wife well. Because everybody, you know, I, we always cross each other's paths. Because in my mind, I think, what if that I was meant to cross his path so then he could find his wife? Because there's similarities from what people tell me. So I'm like, you know what? That's, I really do believe that. And I think there's been similarities to other people that I've talked to. And it's not necessarily in looks. It's not necessarily in um, personality. But sometimes there's little traits that you know like it feels familiar and it feels familiar because somebody taught that familiar familiarity <laughs> i said it all wrong <laughs> to you so i i think these intricacies of life teaches us so much so yeah yeah everybody's meant to be in your life for a reason and teach you beautiful lessons even if it hurts like you can see still you know there's still goodness even if when things are go completely wrong. Oh, thank you of sending hi to, oh, Ignacio, is that from Puerto Rico? Saludos de Puerto Rico. I need water. <laughs> mm. Peter, Massachusetts? I gotta make my way to Massachusetts then. I gotta do a tour so then I can say hi to all of you guys. Oh, Fusion, you like the lore behind the thread? I need to read more of it, but I, whenever I've seen the description of it, it's so beautiful how, like, they'll always have the little people, and it's like it'll never, it'll never um, break. It'll never, it, it'll twist, it'll turn, it'll not, but it'll never break to the person you're meant to be with. And I really do believe that some people tell me about love, and they're like, you yeah, well, you need to open your heart, and... You need to give people a chance. I, I, My heart's open. I give people chances all the time. I just don't think people, I think people want things faster than than I'm able to to give to them. <laughs> I was like, Let, let's know each other first. What's going on here? But I just think that if it's meant to happen and, and it's not me shutting down the possibilities, if it's meant to happen, a person will go my speed and they'll understand what I'm going through and they'll see me for who I am. Because if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And there's no wrong in how you feel. So I think about those things whenever things go wrong and it's like, mm, well, this wasn't meant to be. And and a person would understand. So if any there, uh, if you guys out there, people tell you, what was it? Some people say stuff like, I don't know, you think too much. I think you think too little. <laughs> But say someone who gets you, who's meant for you, will understand your mind and your process. And sometimes, you know, you meet people and you're complete opposites. You don't like the same things. You don't, you're like not the, like that person. Because I met a couple, my friend, actually, my friend's parents. His parents were so beautiful. Like, I love them so much because one was super social and she liked to go to baseball, like not baseball games, I'm a liar. It was... Was it football games? No, it was baseball games. Baseball games, football games, hockey. She loved it all. She's just very outgoing and very super social. And his dad was very introverted, likes to keep it cool, stays at home. It's like, it's okay. And usually two personality types like that, butt heads, because it's like, why don't you want to go with me? Or why do we have to go out? And, you know, you never know how that people are going to take it. But when you see two people like that who support each other and say, hey, babe, you go do what you like, go have fun. I'll be here waiting for you. And then they, they're they able to come back home and then talk about everything they've done and share and love each other as if they were there together. Like, it's such a beautiful thing to see. So these people, I may not have these these relationships that are like work out perfectly like theirs, but I have a lot of friends when it works, it works. And when you see what love, real love is, it's a beautiful sight. Oh, my gosh. I'm just like, I just want to squeeze you guys. You guys are so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you for keeping that 
you know, that ho hopeless romantic that I like kind of like smothered with the pillow and, and locked her in a closet. <laughs> She's still surviving in there happy watching these moments. <laughs> I'm just kidding with the smothering with the pillow. That poor, aw, that poor little inner me. <laughs> Let's see. Um, MCW, what is it? Ha have to come back to Maryland, MCW Pro Wrestling. Oh, I know. Oh, Tony. Yes. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have like a collection of mugs. You're gonna see the whole like shelving unit. I'm gonna have to get those and I'll have a collection of mugs. It won't be, I'm not gonna be the person that has, what is the little dolls called? Those little um, tops or what are those, those, little top, those little dolls that everybody has, pops. I won't have like a collection of pops behind me. They're all gonna be like different mugs that say different things. <laughs> mm. Let's see. Keep the hopeless romantic alive. It's rare these days. Oh my goodness. I was talking to DS Shin. So you guys, if is that a little message? If you guys go to realmelina.com, well, actually, you don't even have to. If you're on YouTube, go to YouTube, go to Ring the Bells. You'll see the, the interview that I did with DS. And it is so cute because here, I'll put that. Does this work? <gasps> If you see D, um, the interview with DS, you'll see that, that um, what was I saying? Oh my goodness, I'm like typing, doing all this stuff and I can't even think of what I'm saying next. My bad. But who was I? Funko Pops. Yep, they're Funko Pops. Ding, Nabbit. You're right. I can't, but Pops was close enough, but, right? No? Look at everybody, Funko Pops, Funko Pops. Oh, so DS, ring the bell. Sorry. Um, I was talking to him uh, on Instagram, but the inst um, the interview that we did together, I think came out yesterday. So check that out. It is so funny. Like the things he does, it's stuff that I, I think in my head, I swear you will crack up. And these, this is that, the way he creates, it, he does his videos is honestly how things play out in my head. So if, I start laughing or something and it just doesn't feel right. Like, it's like, why is she laughing? It's because I see these things in my head. <laughs> I know I sound crazy, but honestly, I think like the the kid that used to stay at home, the latchkey kid that stayed at home, um, when she was little, she was very imaginative. So I always like, you know, use my mind for stuff. Like I used to always pretend it did. Sorry, I say things weird. Where am I from? I'm from California. I'm from California, but my family, I mean, I, I, I keep saying I need to turn in my my 23 me, but I still have it on my counter. But I, from when I made my brother do it, <laughs> when he did it, it, uh, it turned out that we were like, our genetics is basically like all over the world. We're from everywhere. But um, a big percentage is North and South America, like it, the way they generalize, I'm like, well, what parts? Like, I would like to know. I want to know if I'm like, do I have Native American? Like, I, if I look, if you look at everybody's features of everybody in my family, we look like everybody from around the world, honestly. And there's Native American, and there's Spaniard, there's like, I feel like I, people keep telling me I look, uh, I look, what? Nope. Nope. Uh, why am I brain farting? I think, no, it wasn't Thai. Nope. You guys know. You guys know. Filipino. They keep telling me I look Filipino. And I was like, you know what? I wondered about that. What kind of food I'm eating? I'm not eating food. I'm drinking water. Yeah, you guys. So every time you guys, there you go. Oh, Spanish and Filipino. Oh, CM Origins. See, beautiful mix. I just love, I love all cultures. I sounds, I know it, like, I sound like everybody else when I say it sounds cheesy, but honestly, when I go everywhere around the world, it's like, I just, you know, I want to dive into everybody's culture. Like, please teach me. Please show me everything. I want to go see sites. I want to eat all the food. I want to dress up in the clothes. Like, please 
I just want to immerse myself in the in culture, and it's a beautiful thing. I just love it. And I don't know. I guess I love history too. So if you think about how where are these these traditions and cultures have come from and the whys of it all, it's so beautiful. Oh my goodness, what did I just do? I pressed something. Can you guys still see me? Oh my goodness. Wow, okay. Oh, somebody just mentioned farm life mob about the Kyra days. Oh my goodness. Thank you for remembering that back when I was a youngin. I was a little baby. <laughs> oh my goodness. Abdullah, thank you. Do you want to go to Korea? Oh my gosh, who said that? Because I totally do want to go to Korea. I was telling cupcake, <laughs> cupcake. Oh my goodness. I've been trying to like, I was trying to like get myself into the Korean Comic Con because I just want to go there. And I, I mean, if, I, if there's fans there, I want to go. And I was telling DS that everything, so on Netflix, you know, you can watch K-pop shows. And I was so like, I was so like happy to watch all these shows and the movies and everything. And the way it, it's edited and the stories that get told. <laughs> if you told me I was gonna go on a trip and we all said, hey, we're gonna go, believe you and me, I'm gonna be researching. I'm gonna try to it, like learn Korean. I want to do where I can because I was just like so happy. Um, Diaz came back and he he bought me. Um, it was like the snail. It was snail cream. I okay. I was like, mm, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Everything I see on on the TV, I, face sticks face lotion sticks because I watch the shows and everything. I just love, I just love it out there. And uh, yes, I've been to Japan. Oh my goodness. The food there is so good too. Going to the markets. Oh my goodness. And of course you go to Harajuku and everything's so adorable. And I just can't believe every time I look around and I think that's why I was so obsessed um, when I did Getting Real with Melina on realmelina.com, the podcast that I did for like a split second. I was obsessed with um, vending machines because of when I went to Japan. I mean, there's vending machines for everything. It's not only like food. It's not only sodas. It's like, well, I popped huge when it came to like all the condoms and stuff. I was like, oh my God, I'll lead on. <laughs> but um, when it came to, I was like, underwear. So you just like buy underwear, like boop. <laughs> There you go. There was all these different kinds of like vending machines that was so interesting and funny to me that I thought, that's right. Like, that's right. Welcome to the future. <laughs> that made me happy. I love, like, I just love going. I really, really do. You gave her buttons abort. What are the buttons? So that's Twitch. So, yeah. Okay. So, Fusion, you're from Twitch. What are the buttons? And Y'all, oh, I'm trying to have um, Alicia Fox, even though her she's Vix now. I She's not Vix now. I call her Vix. But Victoria. So I'm going to have her try to teach me how to do Twitch soon. Soon. <laughs> so then I could be better and have like the little, you know, what is it? She has like these cute little layout, um, like, what is it called? Those little filters. And she, she has that on her stream and it's so cute and adorable and I love it. And she's trying to teach me how to do those little snippets that you have on the bottom. I know I'm calling them the wrong things. Yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm old, so. <laughs> but she was trying to teach me and she was trying to explain to me. So I will be better. I swear, I'll learn what the buttons are. Abort. Are you guys trying to attack me there on Twitch? Is that what's going on? bring it on bring it on twitch members <laughs> is there a hot girl contact oh look at this this is like tinder up in here oh milani <laughs> let me know if it works out i want to bring people together <laughs> you guys crack me up what wrestlers you miss in the ring mine is chris by Juan eddie that was a good time of beautiful wrestling i do I, oh man, you guys tell, like, when you guys ask me questions about like what's like my favorite, I can never pick one. I, 
it's it's just there's so many in different genres and different i'm in all genres too and, and eras so when it comes to like when i think of sensational sharing and whatnot and you guys i'm sorry if i say the same people those are my loves you know these, these are my childhood i'm gonna die loving these people but when it comes to different eras they all did different things. And say Sherry wasn't able to wrestle the way like women are able to wrestle today. But these these ways of telling the story were phenomenal still. So it all depends on, I can't pick one. I love different variations. And that's why I'm not, I never had my heart set on a certain style and telling a perfect clean story beautifully where it's like, it looks perfect. I liked the, the in-between of kind of like the messiness and also the the perf like the the stunning impact of of hard hitting moves so i love it oh my goodness well man i mean i said this was tinder but you, you guys don't have to get all of that graphic and stuff come on let's just let's drop it down to borderline pg <laughs> like yeah, please please I, i'm not trying to kill anybody's fun or anything Let's see. Cupcake says, yes, I've learned Korean. You've been studying for five years and it's changed your life. Oh, I love hearing that. I've loved hearing that. Okay. Note to self. Have I seen Squid Game? Hell yeah, I've seen Squid Game. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was insane, but so real, you know? I, could, I picture people doing that nowadays. Look how people attack me on Twitter. I wouldn't doubt that they'd like drop me into something like that. <laughs> Come on, Melina, win the money. Oh, baby bear, don't get upset. Miss my underarms reveal. What? <laughs> you know, you guys, right when I think, I can't get shocked. You guys, I've seen it all. You say stuff like that and I'm like, touche, touche. Oh, this is the time, this is the moment where everybody's gonna be like, block him. Hey, Peter. Um, Johnny Gat says, I always love your attires, especially your fur boots, and they look like they got sweaty, itchy, and irritating a lot. Oh, they weren't sweaty, itchy, but they were sweaty. Oh, like, so wait, I lied about that. So they weren't itchy, but they, they were sweaty because, you know, I have my boots and I have my socks and I have the fur leg warmers deals and I love the look. That's why I wore them. I love the look. But, you know, after some time, I just I really needed to make things faster and easier when it came to getting ready. So I had to drop them. I had to. It was just I, it was just a pain. Why are people obsessed with underarms? Okay, not people. Um, I got dramatic. I apologize. I'm working on myself, you guys, and being more aware of what I say. But this one person really obsessed with the underarms. I'm like, what? You like, hey, Bubba, do you miss underarms too? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you guys gotta look at his old face. I know I love you. I know I love your face so much. Look at this little face. Okay. Oh, little bug. Oh my God. He's just so perfect. Oh my God. Sorry. This is like, <laughs> this is my, this is what makes my heart happy. Oh, I know. I love you too. Pain in my butt. You're just a little hemorrhoid, aren't you? Aren't you? Oh, no, he's not. <laughs> He looked at me. I was like, no, you're not. You're an angel. <laughs> not in the mornings when they nip at your toes. I'm like, oh my gosh, your cute little face. It's a distraction to to the attack. You know, he's like, I'm so cute. Look at me. <laughs> Get distracted. <sighs> <It's> like, <sighs> but I'm glad that he's like calm down right now. He's like nice and cute and sweet. He didn't want to hug him. Oh, Brianna, was that what you were trying to ask me? Because um, uh, about the Japanese style wrestling. Oh my goodness, I love it. Like th this is where I'm kind of like, I, and I love. That's why I love different places because they have different, you know, 
styles and I you look forward to seeing them. And I remember a lot of times when people would uh, see me wrestle before, I think it was before I went to Japan and that was in the WWE. So when I went to Japan, that was in the WWE and they would tell me that I have similar styles to Japanese styles. And per prior to that, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't watch. So when people told me, I was like, okay, like, let's watch something, like show me something. And then we started watching stuff. I was like, oh my God, it is like, they're like vocal like me. And I, I loved it. And the facials and the, and the like, okay, vocal, facials and the intensity, only the aggression's amazing. So I love it. There, it, I wondered sometimes I'm like, is that, is there rings? Cause it's been a long time. Sorry. It, uh, back in the day. Yeah. I, I studied up on watch wrestling. I watched nonstop. I did everything I could to learn as much as I can to ask as many questions to, you know, I've bought VHS tapes. Like this was back in the day, you know, and that's how I really, you know, that's how obsessed I wanted to be. I was to learn as much as I could. And I, I, from what I recall now, because back then I watched a lot, so I remembered a lot, but now it's been such a long time, is the rings, rings kind of seem like boxing rings where they don't have like that give the way WWE does. And is it kind of like lucha rings where you have to roll? I always say, oh man, I'm gonna roll. Whenever it comes to lucha rings, I don't, I, my, I bump. I, it's ingrained in my brain to bump. That's the only thing I know how to do. Oh my goodness. Do you have an Instagram? Oh, I have an Instagram, but I don't talk to anybody on it. I just try to like everybody's messages and I try to reply. So everything's real Melina. You'll find everything you need to know at realmelina.com. Realmelina.com. That's always the easiest way to, to find anything that's me. What was Rene Dupree like backstage? He is a good guy who got bullied backstage from Undertaker's cronies. You know, I have no idea. I'll try to recall. But the thing is, is I really don't doubt anything because of the crazy that was backstage where, say, everything that happened in the guy's end, I have no awareness, honestly, unless it's like one of those moments like a uh, overseas trip. And there was a lot of moments, and I think I, I spoke up on it before I'm in another live, that in these moments of you know, the tours and people would haze people, I guess that's what you call it. Like, it, that's what it is, right? But it wasn't really hazing. It was more like, we're going to see if this person's going to quit. We're going to see if they're going to cry. We're going to see if they're going to... Some people flew home in the middle of a tour. They were bullied so badly and uh, that they just packed up in the middle of the night and left. And I don't blame them. Honestly, when it comes to scenarios like that and people could say like, oh, well, they're being pussy. You don't, you don't understand. You don't understand the, how, how it's like to be in that, in that environment, in that position and to have it happen every day. I, I think in the DS um, video, so if you go watch DS Shin, Ring the Bells, and you know see that episode, he actually puts up a list on the screen of one of our tours. And it was like, I want to say 10 shows in 11 days. And, and, and I kept thinking, damn, 10 shows consecutively every day, every day no stop we had to we had to do this over or like every day every day every day fly wrestle fly wrestle fly wrestle and it's exhausting so when you're going through that kind of of tour and that kind of physicality and then draining because we're lack of sleep and then on a flight because the flight drains you and then dealing with bullying and all this madness well uh, how are you gonna what state are you gonna be in when all of a sudden this you know hazing happens and this tormenting happens so i don't know i i wouldn't i wouldn't doubt that that's what happened to renee but what happened was was i was there renee was leaving so actually so 
I got put into SmackDown, and I think Renee was on Raw at the time. So I think uh, so. I didn't really get to see much. So I don't know. But this is a story that I'm I'm interested in hearing because these these are things we don't really talk about. I'm I'm surprised. Like I wish somebody would have said, you know, that's happened to Renee too, because. These are the things that we don't talk about and we worry about talking about because what are what's going to happen to us and what's going to happen to our careers and how are people going to receive it and all these things where it should never have happened in the first place. These adults should have never done the, this to anybody. I was talking to somebody about how it's like a pattern that's passed down from generations so like oh so oh it's okay you know come and torture me some more it's cool oh since we did it since you guys got like that happened to you and for me I, i'm fighting so hard to not let things that happen to me happen to anybody else i don't know like it's a weird world we live in i mean what's what is the right thing we're still trying to figure it out but yeah, I wouldn't doubt that that happened, but that what a shame. What a shame. That should never happen to anybody. The top 10 women W like top 10 WWE women and top 10 AEW wrestling women. Oh my goodness, you're asking me about the top 10s. I don't watch wrestling anymore. Other than UWW and in all honesty, it's just that's a lot of wrestling now. And and, you, and also think about this. I watch wrestling non-stop and it's one thing to be a fan because it's so much fun like honestly being a fan I, I look back and I miss the days of being a fan because you know you don't have kind of like this PTSD and you could watch it without like thinking like questioning every move and all this stuff or thinking about the seeing the reality and then hearing everything that's going on that people think they know what's going on when they don't and all this stuff it's just interesting and I can't watch it as a fan. I want to not care and just watch it as a fan, but I can't. I've tried and I can't, so I just don't watch wrestling. But at UWW, thank goodness, knocking on wood, that when I watched the show, when I was commentating last time, thank goodness, I, I, I it was pure joy, pure joy. And I think it's because I'm around people I love and they're great people. and you know friends and new friends and talent that are just so kind-hearted that i just want to see so much given to that i guess it just gave me a different feeling i don't know so when i watched them i didn't question it even though i did question the ref i was like dude man what are you, what are you doing what are you doing ref that was obviously illegal <laughs> but uh, i don't have the tens i'm sure there is i bet you there's like I could say 50 out of 50 because there's so much talent out there. But it's a beautiful thing, though, to see so much talent. I love everybody. When are you guys going to get that? I love them all. They're all my top tens. Oh, my goodness. Let's see. Um, we got to SmackDown back in 2009, I believe. That's when the Michelle McCool feud started. Oh, you got sent? You got sent where? Like you got sent because you got you felt like you loved the match. I'm bad. I'm bad with the lingo. You really would look great in war paint. I'll put it on me right now. Let's go. Let's go. I'll go to war. Well, not like war, war, but <laughs> we'll go to war, won't we? Oh, put you in some war paint. You'd be like. Little keys. Okay. Do you have contact with your former wrestling teammates? Teammate divas. Oh, yes. I think I said that either in the live stream or interview. That, that That's a question we get asked a lot if we keep in contact. And definitely, it's so funny, definitely Lisa Marie and um, Victoria, Alicia Fox. So definitely those two. Those are mostly my everydays. So... Not every every day, but at least every other day. Because I just love their energy. They're happy voices. Some people, oh, they might get in a crazy fight right now. But those are the two people that I'm just like, their energy and their positivity. It's just like, oh, I need it. I need to hear it in the morning, this happiness. Flow up, 
blow up technique enough. You tell him. Oh, I was like, I was like, Corey, what are you saying? Yeah, dude. Like, I, I honestly, I don't want to block people, but <laughs> why? It's to get attention. Like, I don't understand the whys of it all. And it's like you got attention, so now what? Where does it go from here? And and, and you don't want the bad attention because. The bad attention really doesn't get you very far. So, like, I don't understand the whys of it all. I don't understand why people do stuff like that. And, again, it's probably because my mindset doesn't think in that way of of doing that so I can't understand. But help me understand because I don't understand. Oh, thank you, um, Uno. Oh, no. Thank you for the – I like it when people compliment the glasses. That makes me happy. You miss Victoria. Oh my gosh, and the theme song. I am with you. I'm so with you. You should upload videos of your reactions to legendary female wrestling fights on YouTube. You know, I wanted to go back to doing that. Like, to, to not necessarily myself, but just do reactions when it comes to wrestling. So maybe I'll do it for... Maybe I could do it for, for indie shows and stuff. Well, like, say, I don't know. What what I could like? What is where I won't get like this co copyright thing going on? But I would love to like watch wrestling matches, and I think I was talking to DS too that we were talking about how I would love to watch it with you guys like on a live stream, but I wouldn't know how to do it. And he was saying like, yeah, you just press something together, and I was like, oh my god, that'd be awesome. I would love to watch like a movie with you guys, uh, watch a sh um, match with you guys. I, I think that would be so much fun. So I am all about that. So if I could figure it out and then pick a day, we're going to do this. Let's see. Twitter people will attack her with her cultural appropriation card. Probably, but <laughs> I, I'm like, you know what? I don't know what I said, but it happens. It happens. Who trolling Molina? Oh, it's the same person, right? No, was it? No, it's not Fusion. Was it Fusion? Oh, okay. Fusion, I love because you're from Twitter and you were doing the little, the little, what was it? There were little, little icons. Flow up is the one that we're like questioning right here. I know you guys. I'm so sorry. Cupcake. What's Carly, what do you think about the Carly Russell situation? The girl that faked being kidnapped. Oh my God. If you guys could tell me news on here, that'd be amazing. I don't know about that. I'm so surprised my mom didn't tell me about this. She faked her, her kidnapping? No. Say it ain't so. I mean, I'm not saying that I would, I couldn't imagine or believe that someone would do that, but at the same time, it's like, man, that the shock of it all. Like, what? What? Okay, I hear about this. Oh, Brianna, you said that that'll be a dream um, to watch a. To watch um, fights with me, oh, that'd be fun. I would, I would, I would love to. That'd be that'd be so much fun. And you know, what? this is another thing. Um, somebody, because I think uh, somebody asked. There, there was this thing. I don't know what's going on, and I, I, I shouldn't have said anything. I shouldn't say anything, but there was this thing that was like a debate of like some people getting upset, like Taya and Brit, and. Honestly, I watched that back, and the thing is, is that I don't believe it was necessarily anybody's fault. It's just something that happened, like that, the whole thing. And I, I don't know how long ago it was. I don't watch wrestling. I don't know. I just saw that somebody um, asked me about it, and I looked at it, and I, I, re I saw, I was like, oh, well, that was, that was just a thing that happened because, you know, for one usually like a glam slam you have to hold them like with by the arms and you pop them up and because of the way their arms are are you could hoist them up and get that pop up to get them higher so when you get them higher there's clearance and then you could go for the for the bump down but in this case and it, what people explained to me was that 
Taya wasn't able to do that move because somebody else was doing that move. So she couldn't hold the arms like that. So I'm assuming she did to, did it a different way, which is, you know, you have to have a different grip and put people in a different way. So it was a difficult, um, it's, a, it's a different adjustment that doesn't flow the same as when you hook the arms. So the transitioning, and this is the thing with, with also with Brit, when you, you're in that position, you have to hook, bend your legs and hook and squeeze the person's legs and hips. So then you're popped up and you don't fall in the positioning of the, the switching of the arms. So instead of switching simultaneously with, with both arms, I think it would have been better to like hold on and switch with the one arm. But these are just things where I'm assuming that you had to think of a way to switch it, but keep the same move. And it just happens. It's just wrestling. I, I don't think it's like to put blame on anybody, if anything, it's, just a fluke and it was something that happened that people you know just figure out how to change things up i wish people wouldn't get mad about stuff like honestly but those are the kind of things i'd love to talk about where people see something and they think no i know what's happening i know what's going on it's like no but you don't there's all these these ways to base somebody and base yourself and we help each other in these in these moments and to punish people for these things. But I know my brother was telling me, my brother told me, he goes, Malia, there was more to it. There's like all this other stuff. And I was like, well, I don't know about the other stuff. Like, I don't know, like, oh, oh, people get along, you know? And that's why everybody be cool with each other. Why can't, why can't we do that? <laughs> do you like being a heel or being a face more? I like being, um, I like being a, a heel better. So Michael De La Pool, the reason I like being a heel better is not because of being a bad guy necessarily, even though it is therapeutic. I'm telling you, it kind of is like therapy. So I don't get mad in my normal day to day life. I don't get upset. I really don't like I don't like it. I don't like um, I like finding solutions instead of adding to problems, <laughs> even though me in my life, I tend to like force up my way into these things. But I always it's it's more helpful to find solutions, especially when you're a person who always find themselves in situations. But I don't like to be angry. And when it comes to, oh, sorry, Bubba's baby boo boo. I swear, if you guys electrocute yourselves, I'm gonna be so sad in this world. Yeah, let me put this on. Baby, no. <laughs> Here, play with this over here, Bubba. They don't stop playing. <laughs> but what was I saying? Healer face. So when it comes to being a heel, like say everyday life, I don't get angry. So when, you know, I get stressed out, I get upset. I, you know, you bottle it all up. It's therapeutic to like pretend you're angry and scream and yell and do these movements. It's like very therapeutic. So I did realize that I found myself in that position, but I mean, I like being able to control like the narrative. So the in the wrestling ring, the heel when things get too fast or whenever you want to slow the pace down, you hit the move. You're the one who dictates the, t di the dictates the time, and you slow things down. You put someone in a hold. You start switching things up. You could shorten it, lengthen it, whatever. It's this beautiful music, and like I feel like the heel is the conductor. And I love it. I love I, I when I'm a baby face and I can't, it's like, oh, I want to do this, but I can't do this. And like, you know, come over here, like do this. Like I wish people could do stuff to me, like not be afraid or, you know, or know when to do things. And, and it's not to say that people don't, it's just that I, my brain works in heel mode, even as a baby face where I see these little opportunities. And sometimes I think in those terms, but I feel helpless, like, I wanna do stuff, but I have to sell <laughs> as a baby face. Even though as a heel, I feel like I sell more as a heel than I do as a baby face, because once that comeback comes in, then the shine, all these things, the back and forth, the, oh, the selling, oh, I love it so much. So, yeah, I think heel, I think heel. It's a story, it's a story. Oh, oh, wait, Cupcake's telling me about um, the girl who did, who faked her, her, her kidnapping. She said a man came out of the bushes and forced her into a car and drove her to a house. She said another woman was there too, 
but she couldn't see her face. I'm going to look this up because what? Maybe. I'm like thinking if it's a kid, you know, what if she's, she was, she just doesn't know how to explain herself. You know, I'm here thinking, they're like, Malia, there's proof. What if she did get kidnapped? What if she did? That's scary. Oh, well, here's the, here's the more, here's more. So she also said that the man and the woman took her clothes off and took a bunch of pictures, but didn't do anything else. Then Carly woke up the next morning and the woman played with her hair. That's creepy. If that's for reals, that's creepy. What if that's for reals? What if, because we can't understand that. What if it's for really reals? <laughs> Chick is like playing with her hair. Right, Cheeto? Right? <laughs> what if <laughs> she was playing with her hair? Oh my goodness. I, now I gotta do that to somebody now because that look that seems so like disturbing. I he, her being a heel is more easier. Like you can be yourself. No, being a heel. I mean, I'm not myself because I'm not a jerk. So it to me, it's like it's not it's not easy for me. I guess well maybe that's the case then. It's not easy for me to be mean to people. Like I'll, I'll cover people ask, are you okay? Like, I feel bad. I always want to make sure everyone's okay. all right. So whenever I get people in hold or push them into the, the um, corner, into the turnbuckle or I grab their hair and I say, if I'm screaming at them, I'm actually asking them if they're okay. <laughs> I just do it through my teeth. I worry about people. I want to take care of people and make sure they're fine. It's to me, it's not, um, I mean, maybe character wise, but ring work and the storytelling you got to make sacrifices it's not about getting your shit in it's about sacrificing your move set to enhance somebody else and make sure that they look good and making sure that everybody in that crowd screams how much they hate your guts and wish you were here <laughs> it's the craziest thing because especially knowing like how i re i you know my how i feel and my my depression and whatnot throughout the years but it's this odd thing, and I think that's why it was hard to, you know, pinpoint the depression because it's so we're telling ourselves as workers that being hated is beautiful, is love. <laughs> so, but that's what it is. I feel like there's too many tweeners out there for me. For me, you no, know, I I did it to the extent of like. I don't want to be loved, and if you love me, I find a reason, like, like to get you to hate me. But that's what they taught us. Like, there, I remember there was this time in, um, I think it was Italy, maybe, or, or, no, it was either Italy or Spain. I remember signing Italy. It was Italy. I remember there was some kids. There was a family that wanted me to sign for them. So I went out there and I was last on the bus and they, they went to stop me and they asked me like, here, like, you know, sign it. And I just thought, okay, like, you know, I, that's who I am. I used to always sign stuff like as I just, my, my parents taught me manners. <laughs> I wanted to be polite and, and plus they were so sweet. And I got the pen and right when I was about to sign, I got screamed at and cussed out because I need to get the fuck in the bus and I'm breaking kayfabe and all this stuff. And, you know, I got yelled at really badly. And, and ever since then, it was like, okay, I got to play the part. You got to be the part. You got to be the part 24-7. You can't be nice to people. And I can't not be nice to people. So I, and that's why I always I go disappear. Let's go to the car. Let's go this way. Can't, can't talk to anybody. Because I was always afraid that I would get yelled at for being nice to people. <laughs> It's, I don't know, I don't know how, what a weird world, like how, what? I don't even know how to explain that. Like saying that out loud, it's like, wow, that's what happened. So mom, if you're watching this, that's what happened, mums. That's what happened, mumsy. That's why your, your baby girl came out weirder than ever. <laughs> oh wait, oh, Cupcake is finishing the story. And when she came back, over $100 was discovered in her sock. And that goes back to her looking up how to steal money without being caught. So her boss thinks she stole from him. Wait, God, I missed stuff, didn't I? 
I missed a lot of what you said. Cupcake. I go, cupcake. She was also looking up this stuff on her computer at her job. Is that how they found out? They went through like her internet search history and basically like she incriminated herself. Listen to me. I'm like, no, let's believe her. Sucker. Sucker. I can't. Hey, I mean, I'd rather give the benefit of the doubt because, you know, what if she was, she got kidnapped and when we totally shat on her, I would feel bad. My goodness. Can we expect you to make other appearances? You, you look ready for a surprise debut in the growing wrestling landscape. Oh, thank you. I mean, I should get ready. I Honestly, I should be working out right now for me. It's not necessarily to get back into wrestling. And I really struggle with the thought of that, of do I go back into wrestling? Should I? Or it's not even a should I. It's because every time I go to appearances, I meet you guys and you guys tell me like you would love to see me back or you share the memories. And I want to keep making you smile. And and I picture in my head like, oh, well, I could probably do this. And I want to I want to be able to fulfill these kind of matches like have a match with so-and-so and that person that person because i want to be able to to close to give you that so then you could be happy and i would be happy too of course but at the same time it's like ah oh, so draining like mentally exhausting i don't care about the physical stuff like i'm cool go ahead beat me up i don't care yeah i'm cool with it it's more the the how like the dealing of people aspect of it of the struggling of the politics and all this stuff depending on what where we're going and where we're talking about that's why i do feel like if i think i think if if i were to because i really i just want the girls to shine like i don't need to be a part of it to have them tell a good story i rather you know i i enjoyed agenting the girls match and uh, at uww and it makes me want to do more and it's like you know what? i want to show them more i want to be able to give them different ideas or or explain things to them or try things or help them out it, whether it's advice or what so in my experience of the last U um, ultimate women of wrestling show i realized like i i think this will be my home where i could give advice and try to help out and help in commentary by showcasing them, interviewing them to showcase them. And as well as maybe behind the scenes, if they have any advice and I will say stuff because I will tell them what I think, because I want them to think about certain things like ways of looking at the camera or the way they feel changing that gear and all of this stuff. Like I see them, they have so much talent, like, oh my goodness. And they did it on their own, you know, that's so incredible to me. I am so proud of them. So if we add these little tweaks and then they discover themselves even more. It's going to be such a beautiful thing to watch them grow in um, UWW. So for me, myself to wrestle, I mean, if it if the story fits and it makes sense and, and people benefit. But honestly, I, I don't really care if I ever do or not. It's not important. The important thing is the work I'm doing now and... That's, you know, that makes me feel so good. It's validating. It's, it makes me feel like I have a purpose. And no, no, just the women of today are so smart and so talented. And it's not to say that others aren't and our past aren't. I have to always make those things clear because I don't want people to think I'm shitting on anybody. But I'm just, I look at the opportunities and I look at the things that they're, they've done and they do now I'm so proud of them because it took me a long time to figure out a lot of stuff. And I'm glad that they, they get it sooner than I did. So I'm so proud of them. People cheered for you even when you were heel. You can look up the Bikini Battle Royal. You were the biggest pop out of the 15 divas and, and being a heel. It was probably because I was wearing shoes. I was probably the only one wearing shoes. They thought, oh, no, no, that it wasn't. I came out in a snorkel, didn't I? So I think when it comes to me and Lisa, mostly Lisa, Lisa always takes the cake in funny, funny things to wear. Like, oh, my God, she's so sweet. She's so funny. 
but I have my moments, but I kind of like to sneak up on people when it comes to like, did you just say that? Yes, I did. <laughs> my brother, he told me um, in DS Shin's um, Ring the Bells interview. So I'm going to mention that a lot. So watch the Ring the Bells interview. Go to realmelina.com. Go to Ring the Bells. Um, go to Real Melina at you on YouTube. Subscribe, please. Support all the women of UWW and myself. But um, when it came to UW, uh, UWW, DS's Ring the Bells uh, interview that he just did, he put out yesterday, it was so funny because there was this part that he clipped, is a little clip, and it goes, I'm coming for you, Jillian. And my brother texted me, he goes, Oh, he said that and he just laughed so hard. He just did laughing emojis like crazy. And I thought, that's, <laughs> I don't know why I do these things. Uh, I don't know why people don't expect me to, to be goofy, but I am really goofy. I can't, I can't help it. I think when I was younger, I wanted to be cool so badly. And I, I don't know. I just didn't embrace that part of me. And then I realized, what am I doing? I'm not cool. I fall all the time. I'm clumsy. I'm <laughs> I'm just really like honestly things just happen to me. Like I fall down a lot. Um, I think I told you guys there was this one time where I spent like an entire day with my skirt tucked into my underwear and it took me all day for someone to finally tell me. So my whole entire butt was showing everywhere I walked through the airport and things like that happen to me all the time. Like I'd, so you just learn to, you know, steer into the skid, you know, <laughs> to laugh along with life, laugh at everything. And I don't know, it's just a part of my personality now of not having bad things and crazy things happen, even though that is too, but of laughing, laughing and being happy. And I don't know, like the goofy, can you do an Arnold Schwarzenegger accent? I only do my name. What is it? Get to the chopper. <laughs> Melina. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, he said my name. I love it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, Fusion, you said you love weird. I love you for that. Thank you. Weird is needed more in the world. Right? <laughs> I I have this like little, um, this little meme that says, let your, your weird light shine. I was like, that's right. Let let your weird light shine. I'll find you guys. I'll find you. <laughs> or find me. I don't know. Whichever one works. What would you say three things you're grateful for? Oh, my goodness. You know, it's so beautiful because I'm, like, grateful for everything. So I'm, I love that. I'm like, okay, I'm grateful for this and this and this. But it's like you're asking me for the top three. I, top three things I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for my family. Oh my gosh, stop, stop. Reina. Reina. Oh, she's a big puppy too. Sorry. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for uh, the good and the bad. And I know that sounds really insane. But honestly, because you know what I could say? I could, if I could go back in time and make everything right, that I would not do this. I would like stop the people who hurt me or I would do this. And you know what I mean? All, all these things where it's like, I would prevent pain and injuries and all these things and, um, people suffering and loss of life. Like I could say all these things and I wish I do wish I could help other people. But when it comes to me and the things that are happening, I could wish that it didn't happen to me and say, I could go back in time and, and not do it or stop it. But this is the thing. What if I did go back in time and I had this perfect cushy life where I never suffered and nothing bad ever happened to me and things were perfect. I wouldn't meet the people that I've met today. I wouldn't be here talking to you guys. I wouldn't have traveled and met friends out of nowhere just by like crossing the street. You know, there are things that I met people and they showed me so much love. And I learned a lot about life and love and, and just existence. I wouldn't trade that for anything. So, you know, if I had to be the one that gets hurt, if I had to suffer, like, it is what it is. Yeah, I wish I could prevent things when it comes to, like, death. But the people I love, I wish they were here. But I'm instead of wishing for things like that, back to the gratitude, I'm grateful I had them all in my life. 
I'm grateful for, to have all of you guys in my life. So maybe entirety, the entirety, let's, we're condensing it down to if this was three wishes. I'm going to make it one wish. <laughs> but honestly, I'm so grateful for so many things. I'm grateful for all of you guys, I'm, for the positivities, the sweetness that I see online. And I, honestly, when I go to conventions, you guys are amazing. When it comes to, I, I'm blessed with people who are, even when they're strangers, I I meet the sweetest people. I am so grateful for all that. So, you know, for all the bad that happens, there's a lot of good stuff that happens too. So I'm grateful for all these things. I'm even grateful for these noisy little hemorrhoids over here. Oh, little hoodlums. <laughs> They're just so cute. I can't take it. But how do they have so much energy? I really have to put them in like these puppy training agility courses because they run fast. They ran across the, the floor and I didn't realize that, that Cheeto escaped from the playpen. Oh, they know how to escape. They Kool-Aid man through the playpens. They just, I was like, how are you that smart? You knew that the, where the weakest point was. Charlie Bear, I know you're an old man. Stop it. Leave the old man alone. He's an old pupper. Oh, baby. Charlie Bear, you want to come up here? Come on, baby. Up, up. Oof. So grateful for the puppies, grateful for you guys and my family. I mean, that's three, huh? I'm, I'm pushing it. I was trying to like condense it like this, group it all together. But <laughs> look at that smile, you cheese ball. <laughs> no, no, leave the him alone. He don't want to talk to you, little Cheeto. Oh. Um, you guys is mom. Somebody was calling me mom and I was like, I'm your mom and I'm the pupper's mom too. I love you so much, Melina. Oh, Bobby Petito. Thank you. I love you so much. Sweetheart. You guys are very sweet. Oh, somebody wants to kiss it. I know, Charlie Bird. I know. You want all the attention in the world. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I love you. Ranjana. I want to go to India too. I want to go over there. Especially, the, okay, so I really think I need to be a foodie because I just, I love the taste of food. Like, oh, it's, a, so it's expressions of love. Food is the expressions of love. And so, oh, to be able to taste the food in India, I can't, I'll, I need to go. I need to go. Uh-oh, don't run him over. He's just a little nugget. God, they play hard. Like, why are they so mean to each other? Weird is the best. Oh my God, I love you guys so much. Cupcake, both the good and the bad morph you into the person you are today. It's true. Cause what if like perfect things happen and I didn't and didn't lead me to the people that I became best friends with? What if it didn't? It led me to say if everything was perfect and everything was right, it didn't lead me down the path of of finding like one of my greatest loves, you know, and the things the the passion projects that I love so dearly now, what if none of that happened? That, I think that would be like the greatest shame, like or regret. Baby. Here, Cheeto. Cheeto. <laughs> Look at, he's such a little terror. You are so terrible. He's like, I'll get him, I'll get him. Let me at him. Charlie Berry, you're the one going after them. He's like looking at me like, yeah, they're bugging me. But he just went up to them. Go to your, go to your bed. These puppies, these puppies. <gasps> I think it might be time to. Maybe it's their, it's their way of saying it's time for us to go. Hello. My favorite match at UWW was Hello. Ashley versus Danielle uh, Camilla. Oh my goodness, they had a great match. You know what I also love? Say, there was a match, and I want to say UWW, Charlie Bear. Oh, you want to be a big puppy too? They're playing and it's so cute, but at the same time, I'm like, I can't hear because I want to watch them. And I'm sure it's not the cutest thing on you guys' is in. <laughs> Come on, boo-boo. They want to see you. They don't want to hear you. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so there was a match. I want to say it was UW, UWW three or four. And it was 
All I know was <laughs> Ashley versus Jordan uh, Bloom. That was a good match. And even though Jordan didn't get a lot in, the reason I loved it was because Jordan, Charlie, Charlie Bear, Reina, River Girl, come on, come on, baby. Reina, no. No, go. Go over there. You're in detention. Det uh oh. See, you guys are making a mess. Come on. Go over there. Okay, no, don't try to go the other way. <laughs> Damn, you smart girl. Over there. <laughs> I was smart. She's like, I'm going to work this angle. But, um, oh, Ashley Dombos versus um, Jordan Blue. And it was so good. Like, I just loved watch watching Ashley. So there's some parts, like, there's some matches that I watch. And I think, okay, like, it, I wish it showcased, like, Jordan more. But... But at the same time, it made me see what Ashley was capable of. And to see her work, I'm like, oh my goodness. She, to me, I envision like, kind of like almost a female Fit Finley in my mind. And I looked at her and I was like, oh my goodness, you girl, I love you. I love you. I, I am a Mark. I'm sorry. I am. <laughs> She's like, stop, Melina. I am. I'm so proud of you. I had nothing to do with it, but I'm so proud of you. <laughs> oh, little baby boo-boo. Oh, Sonya Deville. I'm telling you, all talented women, all talented women. I, I'll, what I'll do is I'll play video games, and it'll be me versus her on a video, video game. Because I'm old, you guys. Let me, let me just grow old. They're like, Mom, meatloaf. I can cook meat love. I'm just saying, I could do it. I could do it. I could mom it up. Oh, baby boo boo. Huh. As long as you guys take care of the dogs and look after the dogs, I'll go make the meat love. We're good, you guys. We got this. They're like, no, I don't want to take care of any dogs. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Melina versus China. Is this a video game we're playing? Because I am down. I could do this. Let's see, Malia, you're truly one of the greatest professionals. Oh, thank you. Whoever said that was it? Cupcake. Oh, cupcake. That's so sweet. I love you. Uh, saw your interview with Ring of the Bell. Oh yes, your NWA Power match was the top five. Cause, oh, cause you weren't there. You know, somebody was telling me that they wish that that on um. DS's on Ring the Bells interview, that they wish the top five that they would have added the Diana Perosa one. And I was like, yeah, huh? I did love that match. I love her so much. That was a good, that was fun. She made it fun for me. PS5 or Xbox? Oh my goodness. Um, I don't own any gaming. Like, I'm sorry, you guys. I don't own any gaming. Um, devices <laughs> are you guys gonna hate me that much like, like hate me for that too please like i'm marty drowning here <laughs> oh my goodness i will learn at some point i will i i do watch <laughs> and when i was younger i used to love to watch everybody play video games and for some reason i'd watch it as if like i was watching a movie and it's like oh 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 my god oh uh, like i don't know why i love that and it never, never felt the desire to play it. I just wanted to watch. Oh, little bug, you're so cute. See, Melina as Switch player. Oh, look, all these, it just goes away. Mm. Oh, Kenzie Page. Didn't I, we work with her? Um, I work with her in um, NWA. She's such a sweetheart. Oh my goodness, I just want to hug her. When you say certain people, I'm just like, I don't want to hug you. You're so adorable. I mean, she's badass, but mm, just adorable. She's a, she's a, she toughs through things. She's a strong person. Like I remember, she got injured. I think at um during our match. I think it was something happened to her shoulder, and then she had another match to do. And she still did. I was like, girl, don't do it. Don't do it. Please don't do it. And she did. I was like, oh my goodness. You're a tough one. You are a tough one. 
I'm sorry, but my mom's side's going to come out, especially now that I get older. Like before we have this, you know, we have to be wrestlers and we have to be strong and tough. You make it through. <laughs> Suck it up. <laughs> but me now, I'm just like, no, no, let's get you fixed up. Let's get you fighting another day. Let's let's not, not make the injury worse. Please, please. Can you please listen to me? I love you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My gaming devices collecting dust. Too much work. Oh, but maybe they're excellent paperweights. Maybe. I want to, like, I do want to play because I see everybody having fun. It's like, you know, be nice every so often. Like, hey, I suck at this, but I'm going to play and then just play, you know? I want to do that. I'm, I'm so all for this. But I need it. I need something simple. Like, <laughs> I can't. I'm definitely no expert. Let's see. Party City, Miami or California? Mm, I would think maybe Miami, actually, like 100% Miami, because sometimes when we go out in California, I love my birthplace, but there are moments where it's like, really? We, we're closing this early? Uh, where do we go from here? Like, we all want to hang out. So at those moments, I, I think, yeah, that wouldn't that wouldn't happen in other places. And now that you say that, I'm like, yeah, that wouldn't happen in Miami. Like, I, everything would be open. So, Miami. The way she read that, now people will think I see Melina as a switch. Feels bad, man. I don't know. Oh, how did I read? I'm sorry. I'm terrible. Is it? I don't even know what that is. Did I? Did I make it sound all pervy? Like. <laughs> I apologize. I am sorry. <laughs> Your athleticism, versatility, and creative in-ring moves was ahead of its time. Oh, thank you. You really paved the way just for Charlotte Flair and Bianca Blair and Naomi and other athletes. Thank you for saying that. Somebody else was telling me that um, the other day. And, you know, it is what it is. I I try not to say anything. I try not like I try to like go into sneak off into the silence and not care because any uh, if, if you guys haven't picked up anything I say will get me heat. So yeah, I hate you, you're a bitch. Oh, you're so conceited. Like go die. I was like, okay, you guys, thanks, <laughs> thanks a lot. I'm sorry if I I want to appreciate the things I've done or not in that in this scenario, today's scenario, but in in another scenario, but. I, you know, I know that this is what happened in the WWE. So when they told us we couldn't do a lot of stuff and they started restricting our move set and they told us we couldn't punch, we couldn't do things like the guy, we couldn't do this, we couldn't do that. They really limited us. And so I thought, okay, we're not supposed to wrestle like the guys, they said. <laughs> what can I do that they can't? So that's why it was really important for me to like use flexibility and try to be creative with these things because they told us we couldn't do what the guys do so what can i do that they can't and that was like my motivator to figure out ways that i could use something or do something charlie the bird reina oh you're not in trouble poor baby but yeah uh, i'm i'm proud of myself i i, was, I didn't do it for like hey you're caught in the back huh Look at fusion, <laughs> but it, you know, it, it feels good for me. I see puzzle pieces and I love figuring out that puzzle. Baby, oh, did they kick you out, Blue? These doggies, these doggies. What was it like work, working Beth Phoenix? Like awesome. It's very positive, very positive, sweet. Always like, okay, what do you feel like doing? And, and a good, I loved being able to to be able to like not feel like I had to like be a mouse and not be able to say what I need to say. It was this open communication of like figuring things out. And I love that. I love that very much. And it's that story where sometimes I tell people that sometimes I like what working with Beth is, is a little bit limiting, limiting for the story because you always have to go into the big, the big strong man scenario, like the strong person versus like David versus Goliath um, story. And 
we put ourselves in those boxes and it, it, you have to tell that story. We have to protect her. She is the Glamazon and we have to be able to make sure everybody remembers that. And there's reasons for all these things. But as much as I say, like, sometimes I like working with Gail and it's this versatility and then there's no limitations and blah, blah, blah. blah. But then there are also times where it's like, man, I really do love the David versus Goliath story. You know what I mean? I, I want to get knocked around. <laughs> I want, I want to try to get that sympathy because there's when you work when, when I work with her there's not only the the sense of jeopardy but then it's that beautiful brutal look of when she hits a move on me and I could sell it dead and it, I just you know it, I could only do that with her so I love that very much so I know I've said stuff like where it's like oh well the limiting thing but honestly like I think about it now that I realize that I said that no, I also love to have those moments where it's like, yep, it's pretty cool to have that look of, did she just die? <laughs> did she just die? Is she okay? Do we need to go check up on her? And it's a good feeling when kind of, I, I know it's so weird. I catch myself saying these things and it's like, if someone outside of wrestling heard that, heard me say that, they would think I'm a lunatic, but I'm glad you guys understand that because of wrestling. But <laughs> the way I, it's... An amazing feeling when the ref comes up and he asks me, are you okay? Like he, you see the concern on his face and you get you to know, see like he's trying to cover up. So then he could just like, okay, like it's, you could tell me. And it's, and then I think, oh my goodness, I made it look that good. <laughs> Thank you, dude. <laughs> he's like, I really was worried. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't want to worry anybody, but you know, that's a, you know, really, it's a, it's a moment. It's a moment when, when they do that. Cause you know, when you work with each other and you know, all the ins and outs and you're able to predict and you really can't surprise each other. So everybody sees everything happening. So when you kind of like make the breath believe, yes, yes, dude, I made you thought I was here. Who says, okay, am I getting advertisements for partying? Um, Jerry Williams, aka Party Man, cosplay Bumblebee from Transformers. Wait, see you at the next two months, September, Baltimore. Oh, I might, oh my goodness, I'm glad you just told me that. Oh, Jerry, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I, okay, so I gotta, I gotta check my calendar. I better have written that down because it's in September. Okay, good. So I got to make sure what day in September, but I totally forgot I was going back to Baltimore. How terrible of me. I got to put that on the calendar of events on my website so I can let people know. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I forgot. Thank you, Jerry. They, oh my, see, see how the universe works. Bad things happen, but good things happen too. <laughs> like these things are meant to happen where the universe is like, oh, hey, Hey, you crazy bitch. <laughs> Did you know that you forgot about your convention? <laughs> Thank you, universe and Jerry. <laughs> oh my goodness. Eight ounces of water. Would you drink eight ounces of water? Who is this? Is that fusion? I need to drink eight more ounces of water. <laughs> I, I feel like in this summer, in this summer heat, I'm just melting away, all the dehydrating completely. Oh, I left. So when it comes so much, okay, so when people ask me about me versus Beth, sometimes unless you're specific about the, the match, I always think, sometimes not always, I sometimes think about the whole thing because we used to have matches on live events every weekend for a long time, for a while. So I forget sometimes about like, okay, let's be specific. I quit match or the, I think it was the rumble. Was there, what was the one where I had the little blue outfit and I, I won the title where I was like, oh my God, the miracle. I beat her. Cause there was so many moments I worked with her. It was, it was a beautiful thing when you work live events, it's so much fun. Cause you get to know each other. You start working in a way where you don't have to speak. You just look at each other in certain ways and you know what the, the other person is going to do. Oh, I love those moments. Oh, but you just know how each other moves and what they're going to do. Oh, just by a look. I see you. 
<laughs> I miss those times. It was a good feeling. Stay hydrated. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Jay, you, you are way different than the character you played on TV. Uh, isn't that weird? Like, I don't even remember. I think sometimes I remember how the character goes. But I, sometimes I forget how she's like. But thank you for saying it. It's a huge compliment. It's a huge compliment. Have that match on other tab right now. Do you? Oh my goodness. So so the um you have like different like you're you're watching both of the the matches. Hey everybody, so I'm seeing people, good amount of people watching, and I want to make sure to get all the love to everybody. So if you're on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, I want to see you. I want to say hi. At least say your name so that I can say hi to you guys. I know a lot of people like to just watch, and you're such a sweetheart. It's like everybody's just like, oh, you guys are the listeners. And, and so, and it's like I appreciate you listening, and I appreciate you, your kindness and your time, and thank you. But I do want to include you, and I do want to interact with you. I'm trying my best to get to everybody. I promise you. Uh, Johnny Gat, if you played games on Twitch, you should play Resident Evil. Yes. The horror games with zombies, monsters, and giant spiders. Wait. Which is the one with the giant spiders? <laughs> Just because it creeps me out, I think I should play that one. I should play the giant spider one. Because I feel like that's super creepy. Oh, I hate spiders. Oh, my goodness. Evan Isner, you just sub oh you just subscribed to my channel. Thank you. Oh, thank. <laughs> so just in case, like I want to let you guys know, this Tuesday, I'm holding myself accountable. I better get the episode in on time this week, or I'm gonna be so angry with myself. So this is how I plan in having it. So hopefully this is the way it all goes down. But so far, it's gonna be Katie, Katie Forbes this Tuesday um, on this next episode of, of Ultimate Recap. Then the following week, I'm going to interview actually, um, I call her Action Jackson, Jackson um, Rampage Jackson, Baby Boo Boo Boo. So I'm going to interview Rampage for next weekend. So this week, Katie Forbes. Next week, Rampage. And you guys let me know, like, honestly, um, post under wherever you're at, Post on Facebook, post um, on this, uh, on the comment section for YouTube, Twitter, let me know, and Twitch. Oh my goodness, how do I get people on Twitch to let me know? But I want to know all your questions for um, Rampage. So when it comes to how a UFC fighter, believe me, I'm going to ask him, like, how did a UFC fighter get into wrestling like how did he decide hey i'm gonna own an all women's show and all these questions like i'm gonna ask for sure but i want to know what you want me to ask him and did you guys know because I, i'm gonna tell everybody did you guys know that he was a wrestling fan so he's a wrestling fan and he wanted to be a wrestler so i hope it's okay i tell people <laughs> but it, it's so funny how things work and this is the thing like how life works and it kind of led him down a different path. He was like, really, he wanted, he was set on being a wrestler. And then one thing led to another. He ended up being, he go, went to, uh, you know, MMA and became like, became the, the amazing person that he is, the champion that he is. And it's like, wow. And then still life took a detour, but now he's back in a sense, back into wrestling, just in a different way than he planned. And I think that's a, that's a fun story. Like, dude, thank you. Thank you for loving what we love. I'm so happy that he's our boss. And I'm excited to see how his knowledge and what he contributes when it comes to yeah. bringing MMA and that style of UFC and everything, bringing it to wrestling, to the ultimate women of wrestling so i'm very intrigued on, on seeing how this is all going to unfold in the future shows and i want you guys to um, i want to hear what you guys want to ask him and in, in when it comes to this subject whether his love for wrestling when it comes to what he's gonna what he plans for the show um anything just let me know and put it under the postings comment whatever and i'll look for it 
Bobby looking for Katie. And then afterwards, then we'll have Melissa Santos, Danny B, Miranda Elize, um, Jasmine Allure, and then uh, Tapa. So that's our our United States champion, and I think she will be the final the final one right before the show. So before the UWB five in, at the Globe. So I'm excited. Oh, I hope it is. That was probably annoying, huh? Excited. <laughs> Babies, I know I'm annoying, huh? <laughs> Even Charlie Bear agrees. What is this? Somebody says, Melina, my daughter can't wait to meet you. Oh, Adam, I can't wait. Oh, no. So, I think, let me see. I think it's an Amazon package. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Boo -boo, come here. Come here. Charlie Bear. Reina, come here. <laughs> they look at me like, are you proud of me? <laughs> Baby, sh 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 I can't get upset. I can't, I know. People, dog trainers out there are probably like, well, she needs to like, <laughs> like I can't, I love my babies. I just can't, I don't have it in me to be like strict. <laughs> they just trying to let me know that Amazon's here. Which I probably should go get the package right now. Have you ever fought in Japan? Only for the WWE, so like that's different, you know. <laughs> as as much as like I think it would be beautiful and an honor to to be able to fight in in a venue and in the style, um, you know, that's held there in Japan. Like, I, God. if only I was younger, you know. But it, to me, that's a beautiful thing, and it's a rite of passage, and it's especially it's a style that I feel like it was something that I never seen when I was younger, and I never experienced it. But somehow, my uh, the way my style is of the way I worked had that kind of energy of you know I I kind of I feel like I I don't know just kind of like emitted that. Like, I don't know, I think I feel like it's within me somehow. So maybe in a past life, maybe I was a Japanese um, wrestler. I think so. I think so. I think it was probably the last life that I was in. It had to be. Cause how is it that there's just, to me, it just feels, I gravitate to it as much as I do. The dog almost broke character and spoke English. Who said that? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, token brother. Is that my brother? <laughs> because you know why? Because she's, she's, um, uh, because I brought her from Mexico. So in my mind, I'm like, how did you know? She, she's Mexican. <laughs> uh, she almost broke and spoke English. You guys are too much. Stop picking on my dogs. <laughs> Oh, yes. They do want my attention. I love that you guys are looking forward to Katie. I'm so happy that you guys are looking forward to Katie Forbes. Like, it makes me so happy. But it's going to be a fun interview. And in actuality, the two interviews, and I'm sure it's going to be the same thing with Rampage too. Um, the two interviews that aren't like interviews, because we just kept talking and goofing around, and I really have to edit it, because we really, we were just talking to each other, so... I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I'm sure it's going to be fun. And it's going to be Katie Forbes and Melissa Santos's episodes. So I'm, I'm so excited for that. I can't wait to show you guys. <laughs> um, would you do a retirement match in the pay-per-view? I love how Trish Stratus had the retirement match. Oh, with Charlotte in 2019. You deserve one, too. Big, amazing final match, too. Oh, that's the sweetest thing. I, I, I mean, I guess like I, I think if like if everything were to work out, like if if I could get in shape and all this stuff. Honestly, I don't like wrestling if I'm not giving my opponent, the person I'm working with, deserves me at my best, and to do it just to go out there because they, you know, they want like people want me to go out there and do it. I can't do that. And not that anybody ever expected me to do that. 
I need to buckle down. If I'm ever going to do a last retirement match, I would need to buckle down and work out in the fiercest way possible in in, the heaviest that I've ever done. And in my life and do intense running, just intense workouts, because that's how badly I want to give that person I'm working with the best that I have. And even if it's not great, at least I'm going to give them my best and they deserve to have me try. So that's, I mean, if I had a last match, that's what I would need to do. But, um, yeah, like, I don't know if I want that. Like, do we really, does the world really need that? Uh, not really, you know? <laughs> I'm happy with what I've already done and I'm cool with it. It's, I mean, yeah, you know, that, that, that thought's always there. You want to have this great storyline and be able to give somebody a story. I always wished, and I think I probably won't happen, but it's this idea that maybe I have a match or a story with somebody and the story and the feeling and the energy is so good because it's this feeling I always had when we worked with Eddie. It's this beautiful eye. That's why I believe in real magic or I, when I say real magic, I, I mean like this sense of beauty, this feeling, this, I don't know what it else to call it other than magic. It, not necessarily like wand magic. Ooh. It's this feeling, this beautiful feeling that's like, I don't know where it comes from. How does it, how does it happen? How is this able to manifest? And I can't touch it. I can't see it. I can't describe it. This beautiful creation of feeling that you get when you work with somebody and it's just like, it's unreal. And I want to have a moment like that to be able to pass on to somebody else. Because when you feel that you, you want to recreate it. And I was lucky to have that passed down to me. And I hope that one day, or I wanted, to, uh, the hope was, I don't know if I ever will, because I don't know if I'll wrestle again. But the hope was to be able to pass that, that feeling of this incredible, like, holy cow, I didn't know that was possible. Doing, like, this feeling, this kind of scenario, I, I never thought I could ever experience that. And I felt that I felt that and I was lucky enough to have that in my lifetime. And I want to I wanted to be able to have that kind of match with somebody and then be able to end my story there. It's a tie my career up in a pretty bow. But life isn't always that perfect. You know, sometimes people just don't get that closure. They don't get the pretty bow. But in a way, if I had that last match, would it be a pretty bow? I'm still going to work at UWW. I'm going to be behind the scenes. I'm going to be like commentating. So I'm good. Like I'm still part of wrestling, just not in the way that you guys, you know, expect me to, even though I have Jordan Blue saying, just do the split. (laughs) I love you, Jordan. (laughs) Just do the splits. You just do, that's all you need to do. Oh my gosh. She's so funny. Mm, Ari's tiny elephant. Yes, we do. We all need it. Everybody wants it. I speak on behalf of the entire universe. Oh, wait, are you talking about the splits? Or are you talking about the wrestling? Oh, I did because I said, do we really need me wrestling? That was sweet of you. Thank you. The wrestling world needs Melina wax someone with their shoes for the last time. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was my way. You know, I just smack you with the shoe. <laughs> It's because my mom used to always throw, and everyone says chanclas, but my mom didn't have the chanclas. Even though, like, we had chanclas in the house, they weren't chanclas. <laughs> but my my mom would always, like, throw slippers. Oh, she was good with the washcloth. It seems like it was so funny. Like, somehow, we would always get in trouble. Like, we'd start, like, we'd act up, we'd get in a fight or bicker, whatever the case may be. Like, it would always happen when my mom was in the kitchen, either cooking or washing dishes. And I guess in our minds, it's like, oh, she doesn't know because she's back there. Man, mom heard everything. She knew what was going to happen. And as soon as, as soon as something would happen, she'd just, like, peek her head out or just step out and just throw like either the washcloth or the the dish towel or something she just she was so good at it and it would hurt too how <laughs> she should have been a baseball player because her aim was always spot on 
I'm so impressed with mothers who have that talent and skill. Is this something that they teach? They teach mothers when it comes to raising children. Cause I mean, I will, I don't have any children. I have puppies, but I want to learn that skill, that precision skill. I'll take the class. Oh my goodness. Yes. About the wrestling comeback. Oh, thank you. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Prophet, Prophet, Prophet asked if I would be a trainer or producer. Well, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I, whatever's asking me, I'll do. <laughs> when it comes to UWW, I just told everybody, I'm like, you know what? Just let me know what you guys need. I'll do it. Give advice, give hugs. I'll do it. I'll do it. But yeah, I, I would want to. Hmm trying to think because it's like it's it's similar but different like totally different when it comes to like producer and then I'm thinking trainer and trying to figure out and then we put the label of agent so I don't know I don't know I kind of think like wherever if anybody needs if anybody needs me whatever you need let me know I'll be there okay that's that's the let's not put labels <laughs> oh my goodness but yeah i wanted to help out i want to like be able to, to i just love i love the magic of of a television show and when it's live it's beautiful so um when it comes to uww it's so much fun it's so much fun and oh my goodness i just i love these ladies so much are you open for podcast interviews and collaborations the main man like I'm open to stuff, but I've been Can you hear me? Oh my goodness. What just happened? Okay, so let me let you guys know what happened. Let me get the chat room open. Signal lost. So my iPad, because I use my iPad, that died. So I think that's the universe's way of saying, you spent two and a half hours in here. You got to go. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's telling me that. I don't know. Here, let me put it on the rack. Oh, the babies are sleeping. It's so adorable. Reina, no, don't get ready. You're going to wake them up. Oh, I'm so sorry. Like, you know, okay, so I spend my time with all these puppies and my friends. And, and so I'm used to, like, I talk in that baby voice, I guess. What was it? My friends told me they're like, Melina, you're always talking in that, that little kid voice. Like, I'm sorry. Let's see. Um, yeah, I'm spending all my time trying to fix this thing instead of just like, I should just make it with you guys. But I'm determined to make it work. <laughs> oh, I'm a dumbass. Okay, hold on. Love you guys. Love you guys so much. Oh, hi. <laughs> I forgot that it changes its little scene. Oh my God, sorry, little babies. A camera, oh yeah, okay, so yeah, I didn't explain to you guys. Yeah, the camera died, the camera died. So I have to use my phone, so I'm using my phone. Oof, and I'm doing a terrible job at trying to put my phone into this little cradle thingy. Oof. Oh, little bug. He's so adorable, my little angel. I, how do I... Oh, you know what? I kind of like this setup. Maybe I should start using my phone because it's the way I'm reading the chats. Like I could read the chats better. 
hi. That's how Sopranos ended. <laughs> it just ended like that. Is that what you're saying to me? That the Sopranos just cut out the earthquake. This is exactly how the Blair Witch started. <laughs> oh, I, just, I love this so much. Oh, you're a person that cares for the fans. Oh, I do. I really do. Because I just... Because I'm a fan. I was a fan. Well, wait. Correction. I said I was, but I am a fan. So, I mean, of course I care about you guys. I understand. Mm. Uday RJ. Hi. I want to say hi to everybody. Marvin's like, that's crazy. Melina always does three-hour live streams. You know what? Okay. There, I'm going to pick a day. <laughs> Is that the crazy part that I do this for so long? Because I do think I'm a little crazy. But um, I was thinking because TikTok suggested this. So not only will I pick a day for TikTok, but I'm going to pick a day for like all here. Because I really do want to try to like raise my YouTube numbers, like subscriptions. So the way TikTok, TikTok um, suggested that I do a streamathon. And I was like, okay, like that sounds cool. Let's do a freaking streamathon. <laughs> we'll eat together, all this stuff. Like, come on, let's get some subscriptions. And I thought that was like a fun thing. And I don't know if it'll work, but at least I can have the experience of like, I did a streamathon. <laughs> yeah. I've never done a streamathon before. So I think that'd be interesting. And then hopefully, let me see if I could do a um, what is it? DS gave me a a thought of like streaming the the pay-per-view and I was like really we could watch the pay-per-view together so like people are, are gonna watch me watch it but then we watch each other like what <laughs> I thought that was a fun idea so I don't know I don't know if like I'll do it this time or or what's going on what I don't I don't know what the plan is but I I definitely think that that'll be fun in the future so mukbang <laughs> you're saying because i'm like yeah we'll eat together Goodness. Yeah, we'll think of things because it's like, okay, what, what dreams with me? And I'm just talking, so I keep thinking, is that what people do? I've seen some like streams on Twitch, and it's like, okay, what are people doing? Oh, there's a lot of people on that. And then I'm watching a wall, and it's like, oh my goodness, there's like 12,000 people watching a wall together. <laughs> what are we doing so i've had that experience and i really don't like let me know what 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 can we do let's have some options i can't juggle so if i could i would got puppies trying to answer questions yes please do a live stream tuning in to SummerSlam, august 5th look at her she's plugging away august 5th at this and this and that only in your town right now mukbang was too naughty what I thought mukbang was like food. What? So are you telling me that I, so you're, it's not like a food thing? <laughs> Don't mess with me, dude. <laughs> oh my goodness. I started thinking that like, okay, so I've watched somebody like posted something where they their wife thought something that's a word meant something else and she kept using it and he's like, He's like, babe, Google it. <laughs> Do I need to Google this? Am I going to get scared? Oh, I do like pupusas. I really like your bob the way. Oh, you look bossy, girl. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I am ready for, <laughs> I'm ready for this next meeting. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for saying that. That made my heart happy. I know a lot of people are like, no, I wish we, I miss your hair. You should grow it back. Uh, but 
actually a lot of people have been telling me they like the haircut so thank you guys thank you so much that means a lot to get that much support in the haircut <laughs> because so many people hate hair hair change especially my hair because it was like so long and thick but i it's hot man you guys it's hot nowadays what cactuses are dying <laughs> i my my the back of my head like my my uh neck is just always was sweating so much from my hair and so like i'd have it up and when i'd have it up in a ponytail it was so heavy it hurt so badly so it was driving me freaking insane and then when i put it in a side tail same same crap bothered the crap out of me but you know it's not to say i'm never gonna grow my hair back again but i'm I'm feeling this hairstyle. It's so easy. Uh, it dries fast. It's, I'm not sweating so much. I love it. Oh, somebody else, Posh Spice. Oh, oh my goodness, who is that? Chris Edmonton or Edmondson? Thank you, Chris. He gave me Posh Spice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cupcake, you too with the haircut. I love you. Let's see, 88 degrees out here in LA. Oof, oof. Well, that's low compared to like what the week's been, especially over on my end of things. <laughs> it's hot. But actually you're right. It's not as hot as it was like earlier in the week. Like the... 92 in Orlando? Well, 92 in Orlando is, is crazy town for the fact that it's humid, the humidity. That's what, that's what's insane. The humidity is what's killer. What's messing with you, Melina? Yo, you got me good. You got me good with the mukbang. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Don't tell me. I've been, I've been telling people that, that I want to do one a lot. So if it's not what I think it is, <laughs> then I've been put myself in so many scenarios. <laughs> Oh my goodness, because the stream lagged out and froze a bit after you talked about the mukbang. <laughs> that cracks me up. I also want to try, I want to, I want to try the, do ASMR. Is that what it is? I need to watch it on, on Twitch. So I keep talking about how I'm going to go on Twitch and like go under the ASMR section and see what it's all about. And then see if I could like either like reaction of trying to like, you know, listen to it or try to do that to somebody else because I'm not good with whispering. When people whisper in my ear, I can't. I can't. I guess maybe I would prefer whispering in my ear than anybody tickling me, but still probably kind of almost almost on the same level. Almost. <laughs> it's like, why, do, why are you whispering in my ear? <laughs> These are not sweet nothings. It feels like something in my ear. <laughs> oh my goodness. You think the live stream reactions to the uh, WWE pay-per-views, your subscriber account will increase because I'm sure lots of people want to know what a living legend thinks of all these matches. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. I'm just kidding. As much as, see, this is the thing. As much as, as long as you don't ask me like, okay, ask me for, um, I think it's usually if people ask me for like breakdowns or something, I'm like, okay, that means I have to watch it again. And then we're going to have to pick it apart. And if any time, and this is what I'm telling anybody who's ever going to be my student in the future. So I'm not a yes person. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a person who's going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you how I see it. And if you think it's mean, it's because I was meaner to myself. Like, honestly, I pick, myself my matches everything apart so even now when i give myself a little bit credit and like you know what you, you accomplish stuff melina i still look at my work and now i could like give myself some credit but if i had match even matches today even matches i've had recently and all this stuff i pick it all apart i i you have to you have to take it apart you have to really be brutal with yourself and not in a way where it's like it, it hinders you and makes you feel like shit in the world it makes you want to be better to remember, don't do this, make this better. You make sure that like, you better be there for this. Like all these things that I pick apart. 
I am worse to myself. If anybody ever says like, well, God, you're kind of like harsh. I'm worse to myself than I am to anybody else. I'll never be as mean to anybody as I am to myself because I am my own worst critic. And I mean, I have to make myself you know be better and i have a way i had a ways ago now that i'm stopping i'm like you know what i don't have to worry about that anymore but back in those days you know i had to be better because why not why not i'm not the best but still why not be a bit the best version that you can be and that's what i did but yeah you know what sold I should do, I should do a streaming because you know what, as much as I say like, I'm going to be mean, I'm not going to be mean. It, it, it seems like I'm going to be mean, but I'm not going to be mean. I'm probably like, you'll hear me go, no, why did he do that? That no. It's like, I really thought he was going to like end himself right there. Like I, I, I love being suckered in. So as much as I say all this stuff, I will... I just like get into the moment. I just uh, don't make me watch all those like crazy. Uh, my brother tried to have me watch all like these crazy matches. What is it? Have you guys seen that on YouTube where it says try not to wince or 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 look away or something like that or react? That's what it was. No, don't wince or react. And basically, when I I watched it and I was like, no, some of the people I know are on there. Why did he do that? Why did he almost kill himself? What was it worth it? I, I just like, don't do that. Why? 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 I, I just like now that especially since I'm mama bared out, I can't like I can't watch you. I can't watch some of my babies do those things. Why are you doing that? You're so good that you don't need to almost like kill yourself to do these things. Really, stop. <laughs> I care about you and your health. <laughs> oh my goodness I really do freak out so as much as I know how things are yeah they are predetermined but these crazy stunts there's there's no guarantees that you'll end up fine doing these stunts so that's the thing when I watch I'm like ah! <laughs> so you guys will love it you guys will love me being scared most of the time Oh, now I'm nervous. But I'll talk to DS. I'll talk to DS and I'll we'll set up like maybe so. Maybe I will watch. It's is it SummerSlam? Is that what's gonna be on August 5th? Is that is that what's happening? No, no. Don't mess with my ears. <laughs> Does ASMR mad libs? Wait, what? Like mad libs? Like you know, back in the day the mad libs like fill in the things? What? Now you're intriguing me, Fusion. What is this? Okay, I'm going to do the spider video games and then AMS, ASMR Mad Libs? You're selling me on this. You're selling me on this. <laughs> I, I might do it. <laughs> or is it something that I have to listen to and just be able to like not wince and react? How's it go? That cracks me up. Oh my goodness, to never go back and watch your match? That's not advice. Did he say that? You should always watch your matches back. Who you don't trust anybody else to like, okay, so if it's like somebody who's actually giving you advice, yeah, trust them. But you have to watch it with them or watch it so then you can understand what why they're saying what they're saying and and what they're saying. So you have to watch the stuff back. You can't just be like, oh, yeah, I get it. Because you're not going to remember. But you, it'll haunt you when you see it for yourself. And you, especially when you see it with somebody else who's reviewing it with you. You got to watch your matches back. You got to be your own worst critic. I don't, if it's awkward, it's awkward. Let's break the awkwardness. My life is awkward all the time. It's home. Let's do this. Let's enjoy the awkward. <laughs> So when it comes to like watching your matches back, it's something that's a necessity because you're, no one's going to want to help you more than you. And when it comes to what you look at, you're going to want to look your best, right? So watch it, correct it, improve on it, see the way you stand, see the way you look, look and notice all these things. Don't, don't settle for just, you know, I want you guys to want to do your best. 
it just shows that you really care about the art you put out. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love you, Cupcake. Oh, I love that your name is Cupcake, that your handle is Cupcake. This is so cute. You're just a, now I want a cupcake. <laughs> Sometimes we get here, we, we can be way hard on ourselves and sabotage our potential. It's true, but when you when you're not like so harsh on yourself, it's it's a, an incredible gift. Like honestly, if I didn't if I didn't push myself to the limit, and if I wasn't that person who watched all the matches back and did that for myself. I don't think I would have I would have gotten very far because you know sometimes you can't trust what everybody else tells you. Everybody's like, you're great, you did well. You're like, but me, sometimes I'll watch and I'll think, no, I didn't. No, I really it's different viewpoints. Some people could say and improve help you improve on certain things where like it's this angle, um, different way of seeing um, wrestling. Sometimes you can help yourself by seeing pointing out certain things that you love and you notice about yourself and then get just getting feedback, taking everything with a grain of salt. And, you know, there's don't, don't ruin your, you know, your confidence. Don't break your confidence in doing that. I'm not saying like, you know, abuse your, your inner child. <laughs> but what I'm saying is you have to be able to watch your stuff back and, to want to improve, to see it for yourself and say, oh, admit, I got to correct this. Baby boo boo. She's my little angel, this little hoodlum. Let's see, Ari's tiny elephant. It's not mean if it's honest. I'm sure people will be flattered by your thoughts and take your feedback well because you res they respect you. That's so sweet. We shall see you in the future if I ever have, if I ever start training anybody. But yeah, you're right. I wouldn't really be mean. I would, I, I just really would make them watch their stuff back. <laughs> and they did that to me. I remember we'd go back, but granted, like say they didn't make me watch my stuff back. Um, I learned how to do that. So when they catch me, when, you know, some, certain veterans or agents would come and they'd see me do my, like watch my stuff back. Sometimes people would sit down, like pull up a chair. Okay, let's, I'll watch it with you. All right. Okay, let's watch this. And it's like, oh my God, what are they gonna say? What did I do? But it has to be done. It has to be done. Oh my goodness. I don't know why I thought of a time where do you get did you guys know like this is something that happened in um at a house show with Eminem? It was so cute. Poor Ricky Steamboat. It he is such a good guy, you know, he's very just so sweet and respectful and stuff that every time I would go out in the ring with the boys, um, if I leaned forward on the apron because of my skirt, he, like the guys would notice, they're like, Melina, you should see Ricky's face. He just look away. <laughs> He's like, it's turned red. And, and I was like, oh, poor Ricky. Like, I don't, like, I didn't want to make him feel uncomfortable. I felt bad. And, and they're like, no, no, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> and so like, what happened so, John put like he had me he had he wrote he helped me write steamboat on my butt <laughs> and I covered it with the skirt so that what happened so I think it was oh my god why am I brain farting on the tag team who well there was a moment there was a spot where during the match I interfere and then I get caught and I'm on like because I'm trying to protect Joey I'm on the top rope and my body's like laid across the ropes but I'm thinking I'm protecting him or something. And I don't realize that um, somebody's there, like the, the other teammates there and he goes and he starts spanking me, right? So big pop, ah, and I jump off and I go out to the, to the side right in front of Steamboat. And I'm like, oh my God, like selling it huge. And then all of a sudden, um, John and Joey lift up the skirt right in front of him, like just surprise steamboat. And he sees the steamboat on my ass. And he just, and somebody took a, somebody, one of the fans took a picture and he's like, just the redness in his face of trying to look away. I was like, oh, bless him. It was such a perfect, like whoever took that picture, if you're still out there, if you happen to see this, thank you for that picture because you just put that memory in my head for the rest of my life and I get to have a picture as proof but <laughs> poor steamboat <laughs>
Oh my goodness, I can't, I'll never forget him, how red he was. The guys, they're so funny. I can't believe like when people ask me for stories, I forget to say, like I should say that one because that was hilarious. The look on his face, I will never forget it. <laughs> you always wondered, oh, you always wonder why they put Steamboat on my butt. So the pictures are out there, right? And it's never explained. <laughs> Oh my goodness. He turned so red. It was all for him. It was all for him to just like, you know, <laughs> to get that reaction to him. Oh, bless his heart. He's so amazing. <laughs> Those are the, like, that's something I'm glad I remember because it, I, I tend to sometimes remember the bad stuff, right? So when you remember good stuff like that, it's like, yeah. His face oh my goodness i need to find that picture and i gotta post it because or repost it because that was hilarious whoever took that picture you're an angel you're an angel taking it to the grave i'm um, thank you thankful for you <laughs> oh my goodness oh try to look at all the other stuff cheeky we cheeky with ricky that was good. That was some good rhyming there. <laughs> oh my, he's one of my favorite people too. Honestly, he was one of my favorite wrestlers because so baby me when I was a little kid, huge fan of Bruce Lee. Like I loved it. It's so funny because I think back as like a little kid and I'm here like throwing kicks and all this stuff. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I thought I was Bruce Lee. And when I watched Ricky Steamboat on TV, it was just like, wow, is this guy like is that is he like bruce lee like i thought he was like the wrestling bruce lee and i know it just sounds awful you know it's just it, but that's what the baby brain a little kid thought because in my mind it wasn't necessarily of like a racial thing because i was like four years old or five years old i remember that so distinctly and i saw this badass guy, yes, he has similar looks, but it was like, wow, and he's more Jack. Like, he's like, look at him. He's amazing. And look at what he can do. And he's jumping off the ropes. And like, I thought he was just the greatest thing ever because I love Bruce Lee so much. Then I saw him in wrestling, like Ricky in wrestling. It was like, wow, this guy's amazing. And I just always wished, like little baby me always wished that that I got to see him do more stuff because I, it just seemed like I felt like I didn't see him enough. So I am not aware, baby me is not aware of the week to week storylines and whatnot. But from what I remember as a child and you know how time goes for us, it could be super fast, it could be super slow. But I just remember that feeling of, I didn't see him enough. I didn't see my, my wrestling Bruce Lee enough. <laughs> And that's what the little kid me kept thinking. That's the way I felt. <laughs> Is that ridiculous? Little kid me was really weird. So not far, far off from the me you see in front of you today. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, who did I see? Diego, hi. Robbie, do you remember a famous photo shoot where you you were literally covered in Eminem? Oh, in Eminem WWE tag team titles. Oh my goodness. I want to say Northern California. So we did that in Northern California. And I remember that because I was like, oh my God, how are we going to do this? You have no idea. I think people just assume there's so many assumptions when it comes to me. There's like, I like as if I'm social when I'm not like I used to be very introverted, very shy. I didn't really speak much. Um, people don't believe that. It's the weirdest thing. But I, I was, I guess it just, I didn't show it. It's the weirdest thing. But I didn't like to wear skirts. I didn't like to wear dresses. I, you know, very tomboyish. Uh, so the skirts and dresses thing, very awkward. But in my mind, it's like, I'm doing it for the, for the show. Charlie Bear, you're not gonna get the donut. You're not gonna get the donut, boo boo. But it, it, was, it was something that I had to do for the acting, for the character and, you know, got to do it. Sometimes it was just so weird because it was so awkward. I felt really uncomfortable because I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. And I always worried about my butt hanging out. And then with the entrance, I was just, yeah, I'm, I wasn't as comfortable as everybody thought I was. 
And so when it came to that photo shoot with the tag team titles of, you know, butt naked, it was kind of like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? And like, I think John helped me. I think he helped me. And I was like, because <laughs> I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. I was just like, I like I just was un never done anything like that before. Like I barely walk around in a bikini in front of people, you know? So that's who I was back then. A very... I don't even know if it's insecure or very conservative. I don't know what it was about me that just it didn't feel right or was uncomfortable about it. But yeah, that's I was that and I remember doing that. And now I look back and I think, I'm glad I did that because I don't know why. I just thought I didn't look good enough. I thought I was fat and now I look back and the WWE did give me or the photography, actually, the photography crew, they gave me this big, giant um, uh, picture. So it has to be, I want to say it's like 20 by something, 24 by something, but it's big. And it's the it's me with the titles. And they gave that to me. And so it's, it's in the garage. <laughs> I should bring it out. But when I looked at it, I realized, like, you know what? I'm glad I took this. You know, as much as I wish I had my makeup ready and all this stuff, but I look at it and I think, you know what? I dared to to do stuff when I was younger. I dared to become a wrestler. I really, honestly, I was supposed to just be in the medical field. I want to go to school, do the plan, you know, get married, have kids, do the whole thing that we get told to do. And there's nothing wrong in doing it. Like, I, I really wanted that. But life took a different turn and look where it led me it led me into wrestling and look, i i was half naked at grand central station how many people get to say that and sober it wasn't because i was under the influence of something <laughs> but it's this amazing thing where it's like wow i did some you know wild stuff and i my personality never saw i would never saw myself doing that so even though i was uncomfortable i'm glad i did it <laughs> So I, I gotta look for those that that frame because it's a framed picture of the uh, me with the tag titles. Baby, you really want you really want that donut? It's it's a little stuffed donut. It's for the puppies. But if you guys ever, yeah, you know, if you followed me throughout the years, and if you don't, it's fine. I have this dog Charlie Bear. He to keep my firstborn dog, dude. He massacres all stuffed animals like i remember i brought home a fan gave me a a stuffed animal and you know i keep them all i keep them all i seriously do and he i don't know how he got into my luggage he unzipped it he's so smart he's so smart it looked, it looked like little stuffed animals just laid out It just tears it all apart. Oh my goodness. But yeah, I should be getting by. So it's six o'clock on my end. Come back to Maryland soon. Christopher Wade. Guess what? Jerry told me earlier today. He told me that I am going to be back at Baltimore for the Baltimore um, Celeb. Is it a Celeb Fest or is it a convention? I don't know, but it's in September. I'm going to be back in Baltimore for a convention. So I will find out in the next two days. I'll post it on realmolina.com under the event section. I will figure it out. But Christopher, I will be back in Baltimore. But the stream. Oh, the dog. <laughs> they would honestly. These dogs, they they notice. They notice like the old camera. You get camera. Yeah, they always know 
when I'm on the phone or what it means. And I don't know. I, I really think they know more than, than they lead on because there was something else that I was doing. I think I was, I think I was boxing um, Vix and they kept doing like circles around me. And when I'm talking, they want my attention and they go do circles around me, start like trying to knock the phone out of my hand. And as soon as I press like send, they like get cute and then they lie down. I was like, what the hell just happened here? You were just torturing me for the last two minutes. I know that's not a long time, but still it seems like forever. And then right when I'm done, you just perfect angels. Damn, you're good. Damn, you're good. You know, they're little workers. They know how to wrestle. They know how to work their mom. Oh my goodness. I'm seeing all these other, how much you guys wrote a lot. Indianapolis. I do want to go to Indianapolis, uh, Indianapolis Drabecks. I need to go seriously. I'm going to have to look, like find like a tour where we do a tour to go see you guys go, go around the East coast, go up the top. We got to make some plans. We got to see all of you. It's making your voice sound like a robot. <gasps> What's making my voice sound? It's, is it sounding like a robot right now? Is it? If so, then I guess it's the universe telling me I need to go. Hi, everybody. I want to say hi. Does the glam sum hurt? No. Well, you got to understand. <laughs> when it comes to the wrestling, um, I'm hopped up on adrenaline. So, I, I mean, I don't really acknowledge this stuff. I go out, I go take bumps, and I get kicked in the face, like, for a living. So, honestly, I'm, I'm cool with the glam slam. To me, it's like, let's do this. Let's do this. And I, I know how to protect myself, so I know how to, you know, how to take the bump. So I, it didn't, it doesn't hurt me. Okay, I guess I better go because all these things. It was auto tuned for a second. Kind of cool. <laughs> kind of cool. It sounds fine now, but it was lagging bad a few times. I think the universe is trying to tell me, Melina. End it. End it. We're already reaching three hours. <laughs> but we'll do this again. We'll do this again soon. No, I'm not from the UK. Aw, I wish. Not that I wish I was from the UK, but I love the UK and I love food from the UK. So oh, I want to go visit. I got to go visit. And also, I'm going to have to... I'm going to interview Katie Forbes, the twerk queen. Um, you're going to see that on Tuesday on my YouTube channel. So go to realmelina.com on YouTube. Or realmelina.com. Real Melina on YouTube. Or you can go to realmelina.com for, for my website. I mean, you can do that too. But anywho, just know that... It'll be out, and I love talking to you guys. I see there's so many people, but I want to talk to you all, honestly. So hopefully in the future, I'll get to be, I'll be able to talk to each and every one of you at some point. You know, let's make each other laugh. You guys like, you guys are funny. Telling me the news, or telling me what's going on, or giving me ideas. Like, best family group team ever here. You know, aw, love you. But have a good night, and... I'll try to figure out how this ends. Oh, there you go. And talk to you guys. And seriously, the last stream I was on, I think the last stream that was on Friday, thank you for being there for my father's birthday. Yeah, I know you guys didn't know it was his birthday, but you. You kept me from crying, so I love you guys so much for that. So thank you. It means the world to me. Each time we have this stream, it's 
so weird. I'm not able to talk to you, but even reading what you guys write, I see it. I feel it and I see it and I thank you for it. Love you. Have a great night or morning. <laughs>